So what's up guys, welcome to episode number 30 We have, I mean if you couldn't tell already We have a very special guest The most special guest I'll probably have on this ep- uh, on this podcast in general But we have my mom I, would, I didn't want to say your name because that seems weird oh, Like Virginia or he Yeah, there you go, you said it okay. Yeah but welcome to the podcast, mom. You Thank just you now so found much. out. Yeah, you just now found my podcast. <laughs> I just found out. <laughs> I, I, I recently been watching a podcast. Uh huh. Starting with uh, the one with uh, Club Shay Shay. Yeah, Club Shay Shay. Yeah, yeah. So I really loved it. And uh-huh. I was like, oh, then I see, I will see your podcast uh, mm-hmm. on Instagram every now and then. Yeah. Uh, you know, from there, then you popped up. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, okay, you know. Yeah, I love podcasts. My mom loves Club Shay. She watched. She watched the uh, Steve Harvey episode. The I watch, I you're watch. a fan of Steve Harvey. I watch Steve Harvey. Yeah, I you watch. watched Chris Brown. I watch Chris Brown. I watch Usher. Usher, yeah. And then I also watch um, uh, which other one? Uh, Chris Brown, Usher. You're gonna watch Monique. Yes. Yeah. Monique is next. Yeah. You know what's funny? Every time I hear Usher, because Usher is like one of my favorite artists of all time. Um, I think about dad saying his name. He's like, he'll be like, Usher. Usher. Usher Raymond. Because <laughs> his name isn't Usher. It's Usher. That, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, you know, that's our accent. You know? Yeah. I mean, Usher was Usher. like the guy. Yeah. You know? In fact, I'm planning on going to Las Vegas, hopefully, over the summer with my friends. Really? For what? So I can watch one of his shows, you know? We're trying to tag it where he was. Oh, be. man. You're, you're about to go to, you're going to, you know what Usher does with those shows? Oh, he doesn't do shows? No, you know, I say, you know what he does at those shows? Oh. Like, he's like, they call him a, a domestic terrorist because they'll. Are you serious? Because he'll, like, take, like, oh. men's women. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That came out uh, on the club show. Yeah, so yeah. He yeah. was explaining that the, the lady came out uh-huh. and, you know, didn't disclose that uh, she had a guy, she had a man yeah. with her. So she kind of felt comfortable and free. And she knew after, I mean, he knew he, after the fact. So. He said that it's more so like, we're we're just having a good time. Oh. And it's like, mm, we'll see. That's, that's interesting, you know. Yeah. But, you know, it's going to, you know, if he picks me up, he's just going to be like, oh, like a mother <laughs> figure, you know. Like, it's not just the girls, you know. Yeah, Let if I see any if I see stage. any video of Usher dancing with you, it's going to be a problem. No, it will be a different dance, like with respect. Like mother <laughs> And I kind of myself like, hey, you know, my <laughs> son just invited me out to come and dance. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. But this crazy dancing. This is this is really cool because I feel as though um, now that I'm getting close to thirty, I'm 29 now. Um, it's interesting how. I mean, you're my mom, obviously, but we have like a relationship to where I look at you as like a guide, right? So like, I'll, we we talk all the time about everything. Like we we talk about. Um, just some, some of the stuff I may be struggling with, some of the stuff you may be struggling with. Um, and it's very, like I said, it's very sobering and refreshing to know. It's like, oh, my mom is almost, it's not a friend, but it's almost my mom is a mentor. My mom is a guide for me now. Uh, but also thinking about it too, I want to know who my mom was when she was a teenager. Like who was my mom growing up in the family dynamic? We always talk about our personal family dynamic because you're yeah. the mother figure, but who was... I hate, I don't like saying your name. Who was Eugenia Orhi or Eugenia Agbinda yeah. in the household growing up as a young girl and then blossoming into a teenager? How would you describe oh, yourself? Wow. Okay. My childhood was such a pleasant experience. Mm-hmm. And when I look back on it, I realize that I haven't changed so much. Mm-hmm. The, when growing up, um, I was just the love of the family. <laughs> yes, I mean I was the love of the family. I don't mean to cut you off. My mom loves my mom will like she which is amazing. My mom will say something like, Oh, I walked in and I was just I was just, you know, the I brought so much light into the room. I like I mean, you know, I was the love of the family. Uh-huh. And then mind you, my mom had uh, seven of us. Okay. And I was the youngest. Okay. So I was very close to her. Then eventually, um one of my siblings the older one uh, actually the oldest one mm. uh got married and had uh, started having children mm. so you know uh over here most people they uh we have like daycares you know babysitters back home back in nigeria what we used to do um uh, what they used to do actually and they still do it 
So when you are young, like maybe at the age of four, between four and six, um, then your older sibling, if they got married and they needed assistance at home, mm-hmm. then they will come and get you. Yeah. You want to stay with them, help them out, babysit, clean, cook, and, you know, kind of preparing you mm-hmm. for your own place. So whenever you finally part ways and become an adult, you pretty much knew how to take care of a home. Mm-hmm. So uh, the one thing that stood out that people said about me more than I knew it, they thought I was extremely smart. I don't know, uh, I don't know, the, you know, they base it on, you could not get me to say, I used to like be very outspoken just like today, <laughs> yeah. but I know what to talk about and what not to talk about. Yeah. So, um, you know, very caring, very enterprising, and uh, so uh, very independent, mm. always looking out to what I can do to make my parents, my siblings, and everybody proud of me, mm. you know? So uh, using that childhood to adulthood, I just found myself doing the exact same thing. Mm. You know, um, people don't like it. Uh, you know, they keep on talking about, oh, I'm not a people's pleaser. Mm. The <laughs> more I try not to be, the more I find myself being a people. Uh, pleaser mm-hmm. because it makes it, it kind of it, it, to me it's a fulfillment that's what gives me joy mm-hmm. like it, it just meant a lot for me whenever uh, my siblings were proud like oh my kid sister oh my mm-hmm. kid sister and then the neighbors would be beating up their children can't you see uh, <laughs> this person kid sister how she carries her how she cleans her how she does this and yeah. you don't stay, do anything here so then, you know, as an adult, it was the same thing. Mm. You know, I mean, I remember I stayed with my brother. Uh, eventually, you know, he divorced. We stayed, you know, I lived with him uh, briefly. And always just doing things that will make you happy and proud of me. This is um, the uncle. Agbinda. Yeah, Agbinda, okay. Yes. Yeah. So then, uh, <clears throat> you know, then I got married from there. Mm. I. He got married. <laughs> okay, so how was uh, how did how did dad, how did dad, I guess, bag you? How did dad, <laughs> how did dad come through and, and and catch your attention? It started from the same process. I left. Uh, I was in the university then. Okay. And so uh, one of my friends got married and had a baby, mm-hmm. and that was in Lagos. So okay. I left from Agbenda to go and uh, visit her. She had twins. When I got there, I was staying with my friend's older sister. Okay. Then your dad had just come back from Russia. And yeah. <laughs> he came back from Russia. And then um, uh, some had, he was, he's related to that family. So okay. he stopped by to see my friend's older sister. Mm-hmm. And then he saw me. I, I saw him, but I didn't make anything of it. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, in his mind, you know, he was like, huh, you know, uh-huh. had that thought, but anyway, had to go. Uh-huh. So from there, uh, I came back, and uh, Alex, Uncle Alex. Oh, okay, Uncle yeah, yeah, Alex Uncle Alex, yeah. managing my brother's uh, business. I mean, you know, my brother was in government, so he was, like, assisting him. Mm-hmm. So he lived in the same house with us. So uh, your dad is related to him. Okay, yeah. Cousins. So he came down from Lagos to go and see uh, Uncle Alex at Agmedan's house. Mm -hmm. So when he got there, then he ran into me again. Mm -hmm. So he was like, are you not the one I saw in Lagos? I said, yes. (laughs) So I said, how you doing? At that point, I'm looking at him like, huh. You know, we're kind of related, maybe from the same area. Mm -hmm. So I cook, you know, did the usual stuff that I always do, cooking and housekeeping. Mm-hmm. And so then it was time to go back to school. So medical school was at one end of the whole school premises, and then uh, the legal department, law school, was at the other end. Mm-hmm. So one day, they, in the middle, they used to have like a snack area. So from class, I was like, hey, let me go grab me some snack. 
So as I was heading there, he was also coming to grab snack. So I had no idea that he was there. So then he ran into me again. <laughs> so then he's like, this can't be a coincidence. What are you doing here? I said, what are you doing here? I remember you. <laughs> and then he said, oh, he's just been assigned to uh, do youth service, teach at the medical school. Okay. So I say yes, I'm in the uh, you know legal law whatever uh, uh, faculty. Mm-hmm. So he was like, oh, why you wanna have a snack? I said, sure, you know. Mm-hmm. So then we sat down, we got to talking. And he's like, hey, he just came from Russia. I was like, did you were you married there? He's like, no, I wasn't married. Uh, I didn't <laughs> marry. I was coming back to marry at home. So yeah. then I was trying to hook him up with one of my friends. <laughs> I was like, oh, you want to meet, you know, I have some yeah. life. Then, you know, it was the weirdest thing ever. Mm-hmm. So by then he's not saying all these feelings, but I didn't know. So <laughs> he was like, do you know that you are my wife sitting right here? <laughs> I was like, he did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like I mean y'all don't y'all don't know my dad, but that sounds like something dad would say. Like yes. he's very he's like funny, but like he, his his yeah, he's very direct. Yeah, he's very he's he's a very interesting individual. So like that's right on that's right on So I mean I was thinking aback. I was like what? <laughs> I bet you his face was probably like yeah, yeah. Don't you know you're my wife? Yeah, yeah. Like sitting right here, and he's yeah. like being serious, but yeah. it's almost like a joke. Like, like a joke, but then he's serious. Yeah, and you know he confused <laughs> me the entire uh, marriage. He see, confuses me. <laughs> he had all these, uh, you know, philosophies and stuff, and I was like, I think so. joking, but he's he's real. No, I think sometimes I get my because I I think I'm a contrarian. Yeah, and you know how dad's a contrarian. Yeah. I I feel like sometimes I get it from him. Yeah. I just like uh-huh. he'll get married to a point. Uh-huh. Just to oppose everyone else. Yes, and it's, he just likes arguing. He, like he likes arguing, but yeah. you hardly argue, do you? I have, I have no. I, I argue. You argue? Yeah, I argue amongst my friends. Like oh, we have. Yeah, maybe that's why. Yeah, you know, like if I know everyone in the room, it's uh-huh. not like I don't do. I don't do it on purpose. But when people have takes, uh-huh. I almost like just naturally. It's like <laughs> I don't like that. Like I'm gonna go to a different. You know. So that's that's. And funny. the funniest thing is that he would take such a crazy position and stand by it. Yeah, he'll say no matter he'll what. And then say the whole world might be wrong and one person, you know, could be right and that's him. So then... He's kind of like, like, he's like, kind of like Kanye a little oh, bit. Okay. Uh, probably. Yeah, a little bit. You know, you yeah. know, I mean, he's, <laughs> yeah, but he has his own ways and yeah. he can, so every time we'll be like, I love him. Sometimes I say, let me ignore something. He's like, oh my God, he get it on my last nail. How, <laughs> how do you believe a thing like that? You know? <laughs> You know? Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's how it all happened. Wow. So the rest is history. I yeah, mean, I've like, never, I've never heard that particular story. I remember you uh, said that like dad was, uh, you said he was just a very interesting individual. Like he was he interesting. Was, he, 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 you know, uh, he, he <clears throat> is. Yeah. He's very funny, uh, very engaging, mm. and uh, you never be bored around him. Yeah. You know? yeah. So we walk like miles. You know, we we walk. I mean, you know, and then we are like fun work. I mean, yeah, we yeah. work because we didn't have money. You like <laughs> taxes or do all this stuff. And I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Because growing up, I was so sure, confident of myself to a point that I made up my mind. There was this uh, psychology in Nigeria kind of thing. I think it still happens other places. Like, I feel like. Yeah, I don't know. I may be crucified for saying this. But women that are so sure of themselves and confident, mm-hmm. you know, they are not necessarily trying to get into a relationship or, you know, find a guy mm, that has okay. money, you know, so they mm. will enjoy the resources. I wanted, you know, somebody that was just starting that we could build our home together. Mm. And then, okay. make the money to, I didn't want anything, like, Somebody that already had money, like I'm just working in. I wanted mm. to be part of the process. Okay. So when your dad just came from Russia, he was just like starting from yeah the no, bottom you know, yeah nowhere the education smart yeah. this and that that was a, you know criteria you got to at least have some you know gotta be smart you know mm. so then um, I just loved it like yeah. okay well uh, let me go for this guy because then 
we can build together. You saw someone that had potential and you're like, we could yes. do something amazing together. It's amazing together. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So that we can look back and you look at me and I'm part of the process. We yeah, yeah. do the process and then... It's almost like without her, I wouldn't be able to build this exactly. and then like without each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. interesting because I feel like yeah. now this generation is more so focused on like... I mean, I'm not going to speak for women, but the, the conversations I see, it's like you want a built man already. Like you want him to be already yeah. uh, rich and you're just coming in for him to take care of you. Exactly. Versus it's like you saw the potential in him. You felt that you were great. You felt like he had the potential to be great as well. And then you guys come together and build something amazing versus, you know, just being someone that's like, I guess, like taken care of in yes. a sense. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, and that meant a lot to me. In mm. fact, I felt like, you know, God just answered my prayers. Yeah. And then the, the, the beauty again is after he found his footing, mm -hmm. uh, he wasn't afraid of, you know, letting me lose, like, you know, mm. uh, go uh, fulfill your dreams, you know, mm. your passions, you know. But, uh, you know, he, he want, he, he looks at, uh, Mahun, like you know, being a man, that you lose control if you don't have, and then your woman, your wife, has more than you. Okay. Yeah. So mm. he 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 wants he he wants to be such a great provider and doesn't want to be dependent, mm. you know, mm. on his wife. But at the same time, like you know, uh, he really like opened up and felt comfortable. After mm. uh, he got his dreams and aspirations, yeah, you know, oh. then you know he's like, "Hey, I want my wife right there," you know. Yeah, and he wasn't the type of person like back in the day that they would say, "Oh, when men are talking, maybe the woman should be in the kitchen making the." No, you know what I've noticed too. Now that you say that, whenever we had those big gatherings or whatever, yeah. you were always right there contributing into the conversations, and those are very powerful men and yeah. individuals that we would always be around. But you were always there, like, if any, I mean, you had very, man, now that I'm breaking this down, now it makes sense of, like, some of the things that I desire and want in a woman. But you were adding to those conversations. You were, like, making points. So that's interesting now that I think about it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and, and the truth of the matter is, you know, I feel like uh, relationships, you know, husband, whatever thing, mm -hmm. is just creating that atmosphere. For each other to shine. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. You know, just be in each, you know, like, you know, like, I'm his greatest cheerleader. I was, about, I was I literally. He, I hope he understands that. Yeah. You know, because I'm his greatest cheerleader. And I also uh, feel like whatever, whenever I'm doing something, I do it's like, oh, it's no matter of if, it's no matter of when. Yeah. And he takes pride and say, hey, my wife is, you know, my wife is there, my wife is doing this, you know. Mm -hmm. And he made it a point to me. He said that he wants, he loved me because of my, you know, confidence also. And mm -hmm. he wants to marry someone that will be able to sit at the same table with him and his friends. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. apparently, you know, um, uh, I haven't disappointed him. <laughs> because, no, yeah. I mean, you know, like, we made all kinds of, you know, like, been to places that I never dreamed in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, be at, you know, governors, you know, yeah. senators, all these places, you know, yeah. rich, poor. Mm -hmm. The other time we went to this guy's home in Lagos with uh, gold. Gold toilets and all gold that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you know, like, yeah. and I, I hold... I hold uh, yeah. myself properly. And then we have a, I mean, we kind of bridge across everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody feels like, hey, we entertain us, rich, poor, whatever. We don't joke with friends. Yeah, yeah. It's not their status in society. Yeah. It's just, we just love people. Mm. And wow. I hope you all do too. You yeah, know? no, of course. I don't, yeah, yeah it doesn't matter. Friendships, friendships. <clears throat> Family and friends, yeah. that's all you have in this life. That's so interesting hearing your, uh, the story of how you guys came together because a lot of those things, and I think me becoming a little bit older mm -hmm. and maturing mm -hmm. is also realizing a lot of stuff that I experienced and a lot of the stuff that you guys hold value in, mm -hmm. I'm now starting to hold value in and starting to, um, I'm starting to like adapt or adopt because when I think about it, 
I remember I'll get I'll get to this later too, but whenever I would wake up, I could hear you and dad talking at 3 a.m. for like full blown conversations. And I'm like, it's three in the morning, four in the morning. You guys are just talking, 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 sitting there, reading the newspaper, debating something, talking about current events, whatever. I don't know what's going on. You guys are watching the news, arguing about something every single day, <laughs> every day. Like there's never like, bro, like when we were at, like when we were at home, they're talking nonstop. Like there's no silence. There's only silence if they leave or they go to sleep. So like whenever they're together, it's just nonstop conversation about whatever. So that's interesting to know that that was like the crux and like the, mm -hmm. the beginning of y'all's relationship. Yes. So what was it like whenever, did you ever see yourself moving to America or did you think your life was only going to be in Nigeria? Because I'm first generation I, Nigerian and you guys moved to America. I never saw myself. I never, um, it wasn't, if I may be honest, it wasn't anything that crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. it never crossed my mind. You never thought, so what no. was your... What was, what was, okay, this is another good question. What was the view of America from Nigeria? What did you guys think of America? Oh, my God. Uh, uh, people still think about it today. Uh -huh. They just think, you know, when you come to America, you land of opportunities. They think that you don't even have to work. It's almost <laughs> like you live here and they're paying you, I mean, like you have all these unlimited resources. Uh -huh. It's just your willingness to pass them on to them. So, mm. uh, like, you know, you don't have to work as hard. You don't have to. Uh, I'll tell you uh, uh, the experience. Okay, first and foremost, I didn't plan on it. I had all my plans for Nigeria, and they okay. were big plans. Mm -hmm. I, you know, was, I always liked to, I guess I was born an entrepreneur. Every time, they used to laugh at me like, well, you, you are like some old woman somewhere. Like, I'm <laughs> talking about my early things. And I'm trying to figure out how can I turn one naira to two naira. You mm. know, that's... Naira is the current, yeah, current Nigerian cross, yeah. Every time mm. I'm thinking about how I'm going to do... So even when I was in school, you know, I, I got, like, doing my little thing, like buying stuff and keeping for when the price will go up. And, you know, <laughs> so I always was thinking business to yeah. the point that your dad was like, you better don't give, uh, that I'm not going to give my, uh, have much money because she'll be thinking investment mm -hmm. because he was like, huh? You know, like, yeah, dad's you know, not dad big on, believe, he yeah, he does not, <laughs> he's not like, funny, he'll just spend yeah, <laughs> he's not, that's not his vibe. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, my, you know, so anyway, so I had uh, my plans, like by the time I graduate here, I'm going to get a car. That was a big thing. Mm -hmm. You have a, you, you know, now it's a little different, but it's still not easy to have a car. And then I get married and this is how we're going to build a home. So, uh, so I started dating your dad. Then the next time, the next thing is within two months, he got invited to uh, come and do some uh, scientific research. Yeah, in San Antonio, right? Yeah. Or okay. No, he the uh, in San Antonio. Yeah, San Antonio. Uh, okay. Yeah, UT. UTSA. Science Center. Yeah, mm. Doctor. Are you? Is Reiters. it? That's uh, who they name you. Yeah, after. that's what that's my namesake. But is, was he? Did he get invited to UTSA or UT? UT Head Science Center. Okay, okay, the gotcha. medical school in San Antonio. Research. Yes, in okay. San Antonio. So anyway, so when I came, I came. Uh, he he arrived in October. Mm -hmm. I believe. No, November. And I came in December. He was like, he was lonely. And then they, you know, they closed down school. They were having some issues, uh, strike action or so. Mm -hmm. So I came to visit. I was shocked, you know. <laughs> so when I came, uh, uh, I didn't have, he gave me a little idea. But the thing, I was excited about certain things like, I woke up, I was like, we're supposed to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to iron. Like, hey, you better iron what I'm going to wear. So, so he was laughing. He's like, oh, they don't take light here. As long as you pay your bill. I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dad didn't have no light? No, no, no. He said they don't take light in America. You know, oh, okay. home, they keep on taking light. You. you oh, know? yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> so, the light, so in Nigeria, like, basically, like, electricity kind of goes in and out. I don't know if it's like. Oh, does this still happen now? It, no, it's a little bit. So people have their personal yes. agents. So people have money. exactly right. So if you have money in Nigeria, basically you have a personal generator. So your light will go off, and but the, the generator, generator kicks in, kicks and then in. yeah, okay. Yeah. So you were concerned about ironing clothes because yeah, yeah, they're going to take the light. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. They take light. So I'm like, so he was like, oh, they don't. I was like, oh, really? They don't take light here. 
<laughs> so then, you know, uh, fast forward, um, I started a, a job. Uh-huh. Okay, down the line, several months later. What was your uh, What was your job? My first job, uh-huh. uh, it was a grocery store uh, okay. called Sun Harvest Farms in San Antonio. Okay, and so uh, my boss was uh, they used to call him Mister Bailey. So anyway, so they showed me uh, what I was supposed to be doing in the mm-hmm. meat market. So they're like, oh, you know, people come, they will point out what they want, and then you just take it and give it to them, wrap it, put the price tag. They, they explain everything to me, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. once they were done explaining, then I asked them, so where is my seat? <laughs> 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 so, 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 I mean, it was to me, it was a real question. That was a real legit, like, yeah. where do I see it if there's nobody? Because while he was taking me around, that was a health-based, uh, uh, you know, grocery store mm-hmm. that wasn't like H-E-B kind of thing. It mm-hmm. was on the high end because they had all this healthy... Oh, okay. It was know? like one of those, like, more health-conscious... Yeah. Okay. Some have its farms, you know? Yeah, okay. So that people makes sense. would just come. Every, so it's like, it wasn't that super busy, especially around the meat market. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, so where do I see? Like, you know, to me, it's like, I can't be on my feet like this. <laughs> yeah. So then it's like, oh, we don't sit around here. So I was like, what? What do you mean? He said, okay, let me explain to you. You don't sit down and... Uh, even if there are no customers, find something to be doing. Mm-hmm. You can't just be standing. You got to be moving. You got to yeah. be like either cleaning or arranging this <clears> and that. <throat> and I came back and I told my husband, I said, Can you? I have never experienced this in my life that you have a job and there's no place to sit at eight hour job. You yeah, know? yeah. So anyway, that was like, that was shocking to me. Yeah. yeah. With, so I, had just, I just thought about something randomly. What was it? I mean, because there's not a lot of white people in Nigeria, what was it like just seeing a mix of like white people, different cultures, like Indian people, Asian people? Was that a culture shock for you at all? Or uh, it wasn't uh, much of a cultural shock, uh, just because um, you know the <coughs> your uncle, mm-hmm. just the later chief justice of Nigeria, Justice uh, yeah. Alo, his wife was white. Okay. So, you know, the children was me, me here, and then, you know, before we came, we interacted with a few. Mm-hmm. The only thing that stood out to me, uh, which I later on found not to be the way I interpreted it, was, I was like, oh my God, everybody, everybody loves you. Like, you know, uh, the smile. Oh, okay. You come across somebody and then yeah, because you talk in a smile, like when you talk, which I've see that's natural. Yeah, so I've adapt. Like I can't. I notice when I talk, I talk you in smile. a smile. Yeah, you take it after me. I think you're yeah, the only one that, I can't help well, it's it. It's natural. I can't help it. Yeah, I can't. Know? Yeah. And so, uh, but in Nigeria, nobody will just smile. At you. No, no, yeah. You know, like people will look at you. if they smile at you, like if. Like, Nigerians uh, even smile. I don't even yeah, know if they, they smile. Exactly. Yeah, like, like, they smile, yeah. but they only smile if they like you. Yeah. You know, yeah. like they are not gonna go around smiling. Yeah. So I was like, oh my god. So I was looking at smile. Like, oh, they love you. They do whatever. But you know, it's just courtesy. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with love. It's just like you know, like recognition or courtesy. And so, and then I was also what I was surprised about. Uh, I thought like. Once somebody was married in America, mm. that nobody cheated on anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I am serious. You know, the ring and the closeness. Yeah. So that was the, I was like, oh my, the right place because I was always like in Nigeria, all the time we were talking about, oh, somebody is, but you know, yeah, doing, multiple relationships. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, they practice polygamy over there too, and I hated it. Yeah. Oh no, my ma is, I am not doing all that stuff. <laughs> So, uh, when I came, I was like, man, I'm in the right place, you know. Mm-hmm. Once somebody sees your ring. They just they, back they off. Just back off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah, then yeah. later on, it's like, oh, no, you got it all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> they, were still, they were still trying to, like, you had your ring on, and they're like, oh, like, are you doing anything? Exactly. And it's like, I'm married. Exactly. Oh, you can't have a friend. Like it. Ugh. I'm telling you. So, that was, like, things yeah. that I uh, kept. The reality hit me later. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, wow. You know, it's just different. It's yeah. just, you know. That's always so yeah. interesting because um, I always explain to people that I have foreign-born parents. So, like, they're not originally from America. Mm-hmm. And I'm first-generation Nigerian. So, there's certain 
things that I think you guys uh, adopt, uh, adopted Western culture yes. into the household. Yes. But also, too, I do understand like some foreign elements yes. that are with um, uh, that come with living inside of America. So one of my questions was like, what was it like when um, you found out you were pregnant with me for the first time? <laughs> <laughs> so first and foremost um <laughs> your dad when we got married i was in school mm -hmm. and he was a nervous wreck it was as if i wasn't available or nobody was seeing me before we got married mm -hmm. and so initially i didn't want to get married i wanted him uh, like, hey, we know each other. Let me just, you know, finish my school. Let me graduate from my school before we get married. So then he got the invitation to come over here, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so he was like, I'm not gonna, I don't feel comfortable living without marrying you. Mm -hmm. Because then when I leave, somebody will be like, hey, uh, you know, forget about that guy. He's in U.S. <laughs> oh, I got him married to a white woman. You know, like, oh, and that's, you know, so forget it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, then they will, then I'll fall for it. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I think he had that kind of experience before he was in love with some lady and then uh, he went to Russia and then before you know it, the lady got married. And, oh, okay, yeah. So, you know, I guess he didn't want it to repeat again. So anyway, so then as soon as we got married, uh, the next thing is like, damn, I wish he's pregnant before I leave. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so there's that pressure. Like, I want, I want her to be pregnant because then I'll have that assurance, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So that didn't happen. And then uh, eventually, you know, I came. And uh, Lord and behold, you know, uh, I got pregnant. And I was like, huh. It took like, a, I think, a couple of months. Mm. So uh, I didn't want my hopes to be high because he was under... You know, I was already feeling like some pressure. You, you know, like he just was ready. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. He was ready. I want to get married. I want to have children. Dad gets a certain type of way when he wants. Like yeah. he gets very like just yeah, like you know you jumpy, like, anxious. Yeah. I think I I, I think I I think I got that from him too. Because when I when I <laughs> when my <laughs> mind is set on something, I can't <laughs> picture anything outside. Like <laughs> it's annoying. It bothers. Yeah. Me. Like I start sweating and all I'm that kind God, of stuff. It's yeah. not like it's not all the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the way. You know you. One time he told me, after he's, you know, he sees this video, he's like, why you want to talk so much about me? <laughs> One time he told me, he said, you know, when he has money, he can't rest. He has to finish it. He has to Oh, I've heard, him, I've heard him say something like that. I've heard him say something like that, yeah. yeah. I've so, heard him say something like that. Anyway, back to your question. So then uh, went to the hospital. It wasn't like people were doing tests at home like before, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. I think they had like test kits, but I didn't want any... Uh, you know, like any errors, mm -hmm. you know, can you imagine you have an error that you're pregnant with, with the husband that is like, really like want to have when you pregnant a day is like, oh, sorry. It was false pregnancy test. So yeah. I, I, I went to one of those uh, clinics and then, you know, the lady came out after collecting my urine. He's like, Congratulations, you know, mm. this and that. Your first answer, oh my God. <laughs> I was so happy, right? Uh -huh. Then the next thing, what's sex? Was what? What's sex? Like, is oh, it, oh, yeah, yeah. It meant a lot to him. Mm -hmm. He said, he knows, uh, understands his weakness. He said, girls are too emotional, that, they, that it's okay. If he didn't have a girl, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So then another pressure. Oh my God! You know, I told you I'm my people's pleaser, right? Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're from my siblings to my from my friends, and then now my husband. <clears throat> God, please let me give him what he wants. You know, mm -hmm. so he'll be happy. Then Lord and behold, yeah. You know, let on come to find out. Uh, I did the test mm -hmm. to know the sex. Okay, yeah. And I said I didn't want to know. They should tell him. I oh, okay. It to be a surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. So there, uh, I was overjoyed, but I wanted a surprise. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you came on in a very special way, you know? Oh, yeah, you told me the story. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if you want me to say it here. No, you can say it. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. So then, 
fast forward, um, time came for me to deliver. Mm-hmm. So I went into labor, and the labor was quite a long time labor. It was almost like <clears throat> I was in labor for almost. It was going to like the second day. Damn. Yeah, and you know, I was. It was a you. You know the. I don't know, you're not a lady, but the tr- contractions will be so strong, like, but, you know, you were quite ready to come out here. Mm. So, after being in labor for so long, and my first child, the doctors were, like, betting for each other. They were betting. I started labor on Saturday. So, what a Saturday or one day or the wedding was on a Saturday or so. So, the doctors were betting because I was in it for so long. They're like, hey, if this woman delivers this baby naturally, I'm going to take you out to lunch. It's her first birth, and there's <laughs> no way she will deliver naturally. So anyway, then they had me sign a paper. Like, they brought a paper for me to sign so they could go and do C-section. Mm. So then I was like, oh, no, you know, ask my husband. That was another cultural shock here. So they were like, ask your husband. It's your body. Yeah. <laughs> It's your body. Why you say ask your husband? You yeah. make the decision. You know, I was like, well, you know, that was like, well, he's a doctor too, so I just want him, you know, it's like, man, you're gonna have to sign the consent or do whatever. So yeah, like, yeah. So then, uh, I actually, then they said before you sign, let's check one more time. Is this baby is ready to come? Remember, you were in labor yesterday. All till now, I don't think you had the strength, even if you know, to have the baby. You think you can push? I say, yes, I can push, you know. So anyway, then they check me, and then they say, oh, my God, yeah. You know, the baby has made significant progress. Mm-hmm. Uh, but can you do it? I say, yes, just tell me what to do. <laughs> Man, so they say, push. By the time I got out all my energy, and, you know, try to say, hold on, hold on. I was like, okay. So anyway, long story short, later on, then I delivered you on the same day, the same day, December the 9th, that my mother passed. Yeah. And I told you, and, 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 and the whole thing, the way it happened, I'm just like stunned because not only the day, the time. Really? Yes. About I didn't know that. Noonish. I didn't know that part. Yes. About, I mean, so the whole thing dragged. So because of the close relationship to my mother that I had and mm. I was the most crushed when she yeah. died. There was something about me that I didn't tell her. Mm. So it was like, wow, you know? So then it was almost like God telling me, my daughter, don't do it over the loss of your mom. Mm. No. Mm. Here. Uh, on that day, instead of your money, here is a reason for you to celebrate. Mm. You know? Like yeah. so then, you know, so it's like you know, you I didn't know, know it was like around the same gr- same time. Damn, same time. Noonish uh, uh, store was around the same. Yeah, my, you know, my bad. I didn't mean to put yeah. you through. Yeah, so labor like you know, that. that's how I formed one of my philosophies <clears throat> in life. Um, nothing good comes easy. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the longer the labor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll my, 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 my other children, you know, your yours labor was long too. Okay, don't be jealous, but <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I was gonna crazy. ask too. What was uh? Because I think we we talk about this a lot. Um, our lifestyle in San Antonio was a lot different than what we experienced in Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it like? I actually just want you to kind of speak to the people listening about how our lives were in San Antonio and some of the things that maybe you thought about to keep you pushing and working and and, Mm -hmm. um, trying to make things happen. Okay. So San Antonio was the first place that we we landed. So uh, we showed up just the two of us, just Mm -hmm. me and your dad. And so when your dad came first and then I joined him. So it was such a steady progression of, you know, life, trying to, you know, find our ways, you know, blend in the society, uh, not be dependent, you know, not, uh, I already made up my mind, uh, not being proud, but I like to give more than receive. Mm. So uh, things were a little 
you know, rough to some extent because your dad was doing research, was into research, and um, initially, you know, before they would stabilize and start, you know, you stabilize and start receiving pay, uh, I had to get into work and, uh, you know, be uh, supplementing, like really uh, getting some pay here and there. Mm. So um, then after that, um, I, after I had you, I was like, man, you know, uh, it looks like uh, more and more, you know, more responsibilities, you know. So I, I jump into, uh, like, you know, I did, uh, they call it like nurses aid. That's where mm -hmm. I started. I did nurses aid, you know, you work like uh, in nursing homes or all this stuff, trying to, you know, provide direct uh, patient care. Mm -hmm. uh, just something to give me flexibility and stability with job. Then I jumped uh, from there. Uh, your dad, you know, was doing his research. But it wasn't as pain as, uh, you know, like medical. Yeah, work. whenever you're doing research, that's not like a... Yeah, yeah, like yeah. rats. You're working yeah, yeah, yeah. rats. So then, um, you know, uh, from there, I went to... And then you have to... We had to... We had that time frame within which you had to get your papers, like permanent residency mm -hmm. and all that in order to... I had the right to work coming in, okay? Because uh, the country, you know, uh, the the school, I would say American government, the school needed him for collaborative research work. Mm -hmm. So being his spouse, I had the right to work, mm -hmm. okay? So, uh, so I was doing that. It's the type of work that you get. Is a problem. You come in with a deep accent. You don't know the system. You apply at McDonald's or this, and nobody hires you. Mm. So then you know you go to like healthcare. Uh, healthcare is one of the places that there's no discrimination. You know, if somebody mm. is sick, they don't care who the heck is taking care of them. They want to get well. You know. Yeah. So uh, then from there, I went. Uh, you know, started a, a nursing prerequisites. I mean, like started a nursing program. Mm. Okay. So uh, we moved from one efficiency apartment before I would have a baby. They had to go to uh, a different apartment, you know. Then when the, your other brother, your, my second one, uh, came up, then we had to move to a different apartment. Mm -hmm. Anyway, bottom line is the short time uh, that we were there, you know, we were very sociable. So we met yeah. other Nigerians, and then we had these formidable uh, relationships, friendships. Uh, you know, of course, I became a member of one of the churches. Uh, uh, in Iowa, Oak I, Ben. Oak Ben. I remember. David I remember Robinson David to, Robinson. Yes. Yeah, David Robinson used to come uh -huh. to our church. Yes. So David, if you guys don't know, David Robinson is a Hall of Fame mm -hmm. basketball player for the yeah. San Antonio Spurs. I mean, he was like, he's like one of the greatest, he's like yeah. one of the 50 greatest players of all time. Exactly. I was in class, I remember I'd be in Bible study with his son. Uh -huh. And I remember distinctly, like, I used to size his son up. I like, I'd be like, <laughs> <That's> just <laughs> kind of like in Bible, like, they're talking about Jesus. I'm over here looking at, like, David Robinson's son, like, mm, he's not that big, like, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so then, uh, yeah, and then the wife, you know, so we kind of just be interacting on the church level. Didn't we have an yeah. uncle that, he had yes. like a ten day contract for Julius the Spurs. Wasu. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. We went there. He would come to the house. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah he he was. I remember because every time you come, I'm like, even damn, though, that's so tall. Like, he's tall. Touch, you know, like the other time he even asked of you to Julius and Wasu. Yeah. The last time I saw him is he came to Houston. Yeah. And I I remember like still thinking he's super uh -huh. tall. Yeah. That was like the last time, but yeah. yeah. So we had all these uh, friends um, uh, there that. You know, I mean, we still uh, pretty much in touch today. The good thing about San Antonio, though, is a big city with small city mentality. Yeah, sixty percent mm -hmm. uh, Hispanics. Okay, mm -hmm. so when you come from Nigeria, you hit over there. At the time that we were there in the uh, mid nineties, mm -hmm. um, you could count on fingertips how many Nigerians were there. Mm -hmm. So we knew each other. Anytime you know you walk somewhere and you spoke. English, you know, you spoke, you, they heard you speak. They'll be like, where are you from? Nigeria. Mm. Okay. So then uh, it was kind of special. Uh, even the Hispanic, you know, the cultural, whatever. You know, so it welcoming. was just easier. Yeah. Like to, you know, to raise mm. children. Uh, you know, I would say even the school system, they used to be like, when we moved to Houston, 
uh, Sugarland. Actually, we moved to Sugarland. Um, it was a little difficult for you guys. The school was yeah. not as nurturing. Yeah. <laughs> the San Antonio, you know? Yeah, San Antonio. So, uh, people, I think people think Texas is just like all the same. Mm -hmm. It's very different. So, San Antonio is, it's probably the smallest of the big, like, uh, cities in Texas. Like the, now, it should be like the eighth largest city. It, it's just a, the small city mentality, but it's like the eighth largest city in the U.S. US. Yeah. yeah. But it's in Texas. It's like... It's big, but it's small. It feels so small. I don't it know. It's small, but it's big. Yeah, but the yeah. mentality there, everyone is so, like, everyone's extremely kind. People go out of their way. It's, like, true Southern hospitality. Houston is slow, but it's, like, at the same time, it's a little bit faster. So it's you get so you get more of a big city feel yeah. than San Antonio. San Antonio is very personable. People are very nice. Uh, in San Antonio, I, we... I feel as though like the teachers and stuff were a lot more like personable, yes, very I mean. down to earth, very like nurturing. Everything. And then the reason why she says that is because when we moved to Houston, I had, we had some problems <laughs> with, <laughs> with teachers, uh, in element. Like I had some problem with teachers in elementary yeah. and she wasn't on the teacher's side. She was yeah. defending me. And like, it got into like this, like <laughs> interesting scuffle and back and forth. But so, but yeah, so San Antonio, uh, definitely, um, it, it, it was just more nurturing. You mm -hmm. know how they say, uh, and I still believe it. Okay. It takes a village yeah. to raise a child. Once your child comes out, like I keep telling you guys, everybody, I pray every day. Be contributory members of the society. Mm. Okay? Whatever you have uh, that, uh, that you're contributing, there's no way that it's only your family that will benefit. If mm. you have a child that is out there committing disasters, everybody feels, you know, like it's not just to a family. It's everybody. Mm. So I like the system. I'm not saying children, everybody in San Antonio is perfect, but what I'm saying is that that nurturing spirit that everybody shows some concern that they care about your child, they love your child, they are concerned about their development, and you mm -hmm. know that nurturing spirit was much easier to the point that uh, you know the <clears throat> the white lady, uh, your white grandma, you know Penny. <laughs> yeah, Penny. Yeah. yeah, Penny. You know, I was in nursing school. We we're doing clinicals, and I had my last baby, mm -hmm. and I had to go back to school two days. After I had him, if not, what? Yes, two days after I had Devon, my youngest one, I had to go to nursing school. You know what? Now that I remember, because remember, I picked, I picked out his Nicholas. I picked yeah, out his name. Yeah, you picked the name. So I they told you to name him. Damn, you name yeah, him you Nicholas. did go back. Like two it was days. fast. Yeah. Now it's so damn, it because fast. we were doing clinicals and you couldn't miss more than two days. If I did miss, then I would graduate the next semester. Okay. And yeah. that was. There was nothing like that on the table. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know all the babysitters were in, in you know, like close. Uh, we are like African based. The other, the one that babysitted you was Indian, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, was she Indian or was she African Indian? No, she no, was, it wasn't she was just straight up uh, Indian? I think so. I think it was, she was more like. That was an interesting Indian. experience. Yeah, they would, the, she, yeah. I mean, they didn't even watch this. They just prayed all day. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So, Maybe but, she just literally just prayed <laughs> all day long. I remember so, that vividly. So later, later on, you know, but the other ones, then I had this lady from uh, Senegal watching you all. Mm -hmm. Then she got pregnant. When I, you know, just before I had the, the last one. Then oh, wait. Miriam. Oh, no, that was, that was when they had the husband that would pray all day. Okay, yes, probably. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's yes. what I'm talking about. Exactly. Okay, okay. I was like, she's not Indian. Yeah, she, no, okay. no, no. The other one was India. That India was just you. Oh, okay, okay. I, I don't remember that one. Yeah, this other girl, this other woman, she had a husband. They would literally just pray all day. Yeah, nah, son. Yeah, yeah. 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 So anyway, so uh, you know, here am I with a baby. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the middle of the week. So then uh, I had to go to school. She couldn't do it because she had some issues, so she wasn't sitting babysitting anymore. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that you had to apply to a daycare because they had so many number of children that they of infants that they could keep. Mm -hmm. So I didn't apply, I didn't know. I thought uh, she was gonna help me out. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, uh I dressed up to go to school. 
mm. with a baby in my hand. I just walked out. You don't know the crazy. You don't know what? my story. You no. know some of the story the first time here. Yeah. I walked out the door with Deva in the car seat, and I'm just looking like, what the heck am I going to do, Father? So I stood there. Then Penny was going on a walk. Yeah. So I was like, hello, man. Good morning. She stopped. She's like, good morning. And we just moved to that neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. I said, how you doing? I said, I'm doing wonderful. How are you? We got to I said, hey, I'm in a very tight situation. Um, I just had a baby. I'm a nursing student. We're doing clinicals. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be there by 7 o'clock. And now it's 6 whatever. And I don't know. I don't have anybody to watch my baby. Mm -hmm. And do you know anybody in this neighborhood? That can bail me out. If I don't, if I miss this clinic today, they can't give me any favors. There's no exception. I would just have to graduate. She was like, I live down the street. I have my children. I homeschool them. Mm -hmm. My daughter is next door. You can go down and inquire about me. Okay? If you don't mind, if you feel comfortable, it's going to be okay. I can watch your, mm -hmm. your child for you. Yeah, wow. That's how the relationship started. Yeah. And so I was like, what? Yeah, and they're like fa like they were like family. It was like siblings almost. Like we would there were our babysitters, but like it was more so just like one big family. So, <laughs> like yeah. Do you know that That's crazy. I, I am saying it one of these days I'm gonna I don't know how they get women, you know, give give them recognition on the show. I still don't know. I've offered her, like when your dad was in government, like I'd send you to wherever you want in the world. I'll pay for it. Yeah. She, she, doesn't, she doesn't like to fly like that. She, her life is grandchildren. Yeah. So, I mean, her children, her family. So, one time I had her go to one of the, you know, I said, Where do you want to go? So, she said, One place. You know, very conservative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I paid for her to go with her children. She loved it. But anyway, so she took. Okay, oh, they were that day. I went mm -hmm. to school. I was like, oh my God. The whole clinic, I'm thinking, okay, so what about the next day? I come back. I went to her place to thank her. I'm just like super grateful and thanking God. Like when you talk about an angel, Father, you just sent me one. So I went there. We were talking. I was like, I'm so sorry. I didn't see this coming. The lady I was looking forward to, she couldn't do it. And then she's like, oh, it's okay. And then we're talking, come to find out, she went to the same church. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. She's like, I, I said, where well, you go to church? She said, Oak Benz Church of Christ. I was like, oh, that's what I go to. She's like, really? Mm -hmm. Then she's like, okay, have you found somebody now? I said, no, yeah. Did you, were you able to know anybody around? She's like, no. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. I keep watching and we keep looking. Son, <laughs> that was it. Yeah, that was it. Then it became like, uh, you know what that woman did for me? I tell you what, because you plant seeds in this life. You plant seeds. You, if you don't reap them, your children, you don't, when you plant, you don't have to harvest. Yeah, yeah. You, the harvest, your children will do the harvest. Mm. You are there, your grandchildren. Someone else will do it for somebody, or sometimes it's not even your family. That woman, she told me, you don't have to pay me a dime. Mm. I know you are just a student. Your husband is not uh, very supportive of the whatever. I am watching. I will watch your children. You go to that school and you go to work. Mm. And you go to school until when you say you are done. Okay? Mm. I'm here. I homeschool. I have my own little business. And you know Penny. Yeah. She doesn't have so much. It's not like... So, I mean, you, when you come across such goodness mm -hmm. you're talking about investment yeah you know planting a seed there is no i mean i still don't know and you know how i feel about her do mm -hmm. you know that she's come to each and every one of your graduations really she came to your graduation you forgot no i mean just school, i mean high yeah graduation yes she was there yeah, she yeah, came yeah, for yeah, yeah. Uh, cheers she yeah came she for did, yeah yeah so every little whatever she came for my when i graduated from uh, law school yeah law school too yeah, yeah. So, I mean, um, 
Then from there, of course, I graduated uh, from the nursing school. Your dad was in law school here in Houston. Mm. And then, um, you know, he was like, hey, Houston is too much of, I mean, San Antonio is too close knit, mm -hmm. too much of family thing. It's like, I'm in law school right now. You just graduated from nursing, but I'm in law school. Mm -hmm. Nobody, I, if I say in San Antonio, I am not going to survive because nobody is going to want to sue another person. <laughs> That's Everyone's too nice, like this. Yeah, too nice. they're so close. They're like, "Oh, this is a family thing." Yeah, yeah. It. So he was like, "Let's let's just move to move Houston. to Houston and kind of figure yeah. things out." Okay, yeah. So yeah. then we showed over here, and it's like, "Oh my God, okay, this is different." Mm. It's like so many Nigerians here. You say something, nobody want to know if you're a Nigerian. Nobody starts to ask you, "Are you a Nigerian?" Yeah. Like they've got past. Houston is so way more diverse. Houston is like diverse. the it's like the southern uh, New mm. York. Now everybody's busy. Nobody yeah. has time for you. The yeah, school yeah. system, they're dealing with so much issues. Like, they're not pampering nobody. Like, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are struggling with it. But yeah. the good thing about you guys is that you um, you used to uh, detect mm. and determine which way the, the neighborhood will go. Everywhere you went, mm. all of you. Because... I wanted you all to enjoy life, like, you know, be the outdoor. That was going to be my, course. yeah, that was going to be my next question because we didn't grow up, we didn't have like extremely um, strict values, like in Nigerian values, at least like we were out and about in the community. So like uh, for people listening, we used to, it was almost like, I'm trying to think of a good, do you know any good movies where like the kids are like, <laughs> like the Goonies right. or like maybe, uh oh, the Sandlot or something like that. Yeah. Like. That was my, that was my experience growing up. So I, we, like me, my brothers and my sister, like we would all lead like the neighborhood brigade. Like it's almost like the coat, like yeah, kids next door is like, uh, <laughs> we would gather like all the kids in the neighborhood. And it's like, we were the ones that were kind of like bringing everyone together when we were in San Antonio. And then we went to Houston too. We did the same thing. Yeah. Um, so did you got did you and dad have a conversation about letting us be more free or was that just how you guys lived in Nigeria as well? We did it. <clears throat> it's very interesting. Um we never really sat down. You know, you know we were, we were very spontaneous. Mm, mm. So we're not one of the I know I appreciate people planning everything or whatever but we were not we never such a couple as far as you know uh with the children he left like the domestic whatever stuff mm -hmm. with you know me yeah and with him too the truth of the matter is we just like i enjoyed my childhood like i told you and part mm -hmm. of it was that you go out there you do stuff like you try to uh uh, imitate the older adults like mm, mm. you'll be creating your own childlike environment like you know it is sad you're acting like you pick a stone and act like it's money mm. but you know like different little things that because they were nothing there was nothing like toys you were creative yeah you form your own toys you knew how to make a catapult mm. you knew how to do like all this little you created your own fun environment so when we had, uh, when you all were little, we tried to create the same environment. Mm. One thing that we always did, the neighborhood that we stayed in, we wanted to make sure that we, say, we stayed in a neighborhood that was safe, uh, less crime, you mm. know, um, indices in the area you know so we and then the schools so no matter how it's you know not how expensive we find a little area within that area mm -hmm. to making sure that you know that safety in san antonio it was the same thing yeah okay we say where it was safe that you didn't have to be watching over uh believe it or not like when we moved to sugarland remember the entire time you were going to school we never locked our home one day yeah, you should. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked now. So. Now it's locked. Yeah, it's now it's locked. Now I have cameras. You know. Yeah. You know, I have cameras. No, but over, no. But growing. No, move. seriously though. Growing up, we our our door was always open. It was always open. There was no People like lock. Friends. It was just open. It was open door policy. Yeah. I mean, I wake up and make uh, all kinds of breakfast, pancakes and uh, biscuits and you name it. 
I just wanted them to have a pleasant childhood. Like I didn't want our house was like yeah. inside. Our house was the spend the energy and interact with each other. Our house was like the meeting spot for like yeah, the neighborhood. For the neighborhood. Yeah, like the kids would come over because they know number one, you're gonna cook. Sleep, like sleep and then, <laughs> Yeah. And they would get mad at me why are you letting children have variety. I say, here lies pancakes. The other one wants biscuits. I mean, I'm here. Yeah. Why no, I she used to me, oh my buffet? man, I'm starting time. to get homesick. I'm thinking about <laughs> my mom so my mom loves cooking she that's like one of her things whenever like guests are over the breakfasts that we would have it would be pancakes eggs biscuit bacon Evil like you know it would just be like a whole like platter it'd be like a <laughs> breakfast platter and i'm like yeah and like you have like because i'm very i'd eat the same thing okay. every single day yeah i, I, keep, I keep bragging about it also. yeah i ate the same thing what to make you know so it would be like, pancakes omelets <laughs> every single time so it's like they would have like a platter like biscuits sausage like bacon anything you want and then me i'll just go inside the oven or the <laughs> the oven or the microwave open it up my 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 four pancakes are there and my omelet i take it i go upstairs everyone else stays downstairs to eat but i know exactly what i'm gonna get so it's, you know i mean <clears throat> that's that's the experience yeah that's the experience i wanted them to have like you know because your childhood means a lot yeah you know some people you know it's almost like an unresolved you know uh business or something like you never can get over it yeah. oh you try to so it's like you know i'm gonna do my best like you know I'm still like, you know, like straight, go do this, do this and that. But at the same time, I was kind of open, mm -hmm. you know. My whole thing is forget about Nigerian culture, this kind of culture, American culture. So my whole goal was to raise you in such a way that you respect people, mm -hmm. you understand your, you know, fundamental values that mean a lot you are good you know citizens mm. okay uh no crime you know don't be going out there um, you know doing like some funny yeah on a, you know so those ones you are clear and then i'm like you know then you're seeing it model you mm. know and so um all these other things like uh every culture what they emphasize you know good people yeah just be good people yeah just, you know just we used grow to, up. i remember uh one of the things it's like we were very polite like all the i think like all the uh, uh neighborhood parents would say that oh mm -hmm. like the orhees are very yes. polite they say yes ma'am no ma'am like up to you today they yeah. talk about it you know miss killed every time all of them are down there is like, oh my god you know i mean to the point that sometimes they're like be critical of their children, like, hey, you are set the standard. Like, you mm, know, like, yeah, yeah. I was like, no, I mean, you know, because you're not, they was, also had their flaws, but. Yeah, it was different yeah. because, I mean, we, so, yeah, we, we, op you opened, you opened uh, yourself up to Western culture, but there was still, like, when you come downstairs, you say good morning, good you morning. greet, you don't, mm -hmm. like, you don't just, like, walk in yeah. and act like you don't, act like you own the you place. Say, and thank you. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Yeah all that kind of stuff so when we would go to other kids house houses anytime i addressed the mom or dad yes ma'am no sir yes ma'am no sir yes i do like that sir all that kind of stuff and they they had to tell it's like hey relax like you could you could be okay meanwhile I remember jake jake would be screaming <laughs> jake would be screaming and yelling at uh his parents it's like leave us alone leave us alone mom i'm like and then you would come to my house, and then it was different. Yeah, 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 because yeah. Because the way you are, would be like, you know, so it's like, oh, no. I, yeah, it's I like, mean, hey, man, we can't yeah. yell at me. We can't say that's my mom. Yeah, so. all this, you know, talking back. So to me, uh, it wasn't um, like, <clears throat> what kind of culture? I mean, <clears throat> what is it? I mean, you see me eat my food. Uh, I offered it to you guys, but I don't want to, like, say, hey, you got to eat what I eat. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Gotta, you know, like. You are in school, you have to be eating what they are offering you. Why mm -hmm. don't I figure out the best version of it? Yeah. To the point that you are were refusing uh, to go to IHOP. <laughs> you know, they, uh, your dad used to say, hey, IHOP every weekend or Saturday. They were, you know, it's like, oh, I yeah, think we... Then you are saying, oh, Ma, your pancakes are better than IHOP. IHOP, no offense. <laughs> you know? Dad, loves, I, yes, dad yeah. loves eating out. Yes. Yeah, he does. Because when I think about it, we used to go to IHOP 
every it was like ritual yeah. like every saturday or sunday right Yes, every Saturday. So then, yeah, we would go to they say, Mom's pancakes are better than I hope. So you say the kids don't want to go out because they say your pancakes are better. <laughs> the bad part is this. Or, oh, you know, I mean, see happens. He will eat out, but he comes home and he wants to eat homemade food. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, so, the, so I'll be like, why do we go out to go eat? Then I come home. Instead of me sitting and chilling, you know? Yeah. Then you are waiting for food like you didn't eat. You know? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, I, we just wanted you all to have like, you know, like um, good experience, mm. you know, growing up, you know? So whenever we were in the household, I remember, I mean, you got, you and dad would speak Teve amongst each other. Mm. Was there ever like, oh, we need to make sure that the kids know Teve or it just kind of like, rolled away where it didn't uh because i could oddly understand i could like understand. if if, t if people are talking to t in front of me for some reason i could understand what they're saying it's a gist yeah i'm like i know what the conversation is kind of about yeah. and i can use context clues but i mean I, I can't speak it at all the um we wish i would try because you know we all spoke uh, i mean between me and him we Always uh, spoke to you. Mm. Know, I would still mm. speak to you when we are together at home. The difficulty was just uh, the stress of having you guys. Uh, first and foremost, uh, it was challenging times. Like I'm busy. I'm trying to do. Yeah. What I, if I say something one time, I want you all to understand. Mm. Like, I'm not trying yeah, to yeah. Like, translate. Teach over and yeah, over and over. over like, yeah, translate yeah. stuff. And then, um, uh, of course, my my mom. You know, disease before uh, I even got married. Mm. So uh, there was no family to literally stay home. True. You know, yeah, to yeah, be yeah. speaking the language mm. uh, to you guys. And then, um, like your dad used to say, you know, it's like, you know, uh, it's a global village. Mm. Okay. You got to be very competitive. Uh, yeah. T, we give you our, that's our try, TIV, not T, but TIV. Mm -hmm. We um, give you that uh, cultural identity, mm -hmm. but that's about it. You have it in the names, you know. So at the end of the day, um, it's not going to reduce you or, you know, like you're going to be competitive out there. You know, it's more important you understand English. Then mm -hmm. later on, you can always learn teeth. Yeah. So when we're going to Nigeria... Then you start to, you know, picking, picking up, up a little bit here and there. Yeah. yeah. I remember when I was going to Nigeria consistently, there was a point where like, I mean, they would say like, this is how you say good morning, good night. Mm, like, yeah, that, that. yeah. <laughs> how do you say it again? I've, Undeve. Undeve. Yeah, good yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How do you say good night? Good night. Yeah. Pande. Oh, Pande. Pande okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pande. Yeah. Yeah. Sag -be. Yeah. Yeah. Sag -be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I was going to ask, uh, as, as like obviously we we lived in Houston and we started maturing more uh because I want to get to what was your initial feeling whenever I came to you saying that I wanted to drop out of uh <laughs> college <laughs> to pursue entrepreneurship and 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 social media and YouTube and all that kind of stuff okay I see her something to say about that after I, I know I actually let me use the Russian real quick because yeah, I, I already know my mom's about go to ahead. Give you a lot lecture. Okay, uh -huh. quick restroom break. Out of, <laughs> out of go. But so, what were your thoughts whenever I dropped out of? Uh, I told you I wanted to drop out of college and pursue like YouTube and entrepreneurship. Okay, <laughs> that was heavy. Yeah. My initial thoughts um, were like, okay, uh, I like the way. You handled it. I remember when I went to uh, your orientation, they were talking about, you know, at uh, Texas Tech. Texas Tech, yeah. So they, uh, we went there and they were talking about how some children will be there, uh, quit, you know, they will drop out and never uh, tell the parents. Mm -hmm. And then graduation time will come. And then, yeah, they that said it crazy. in the orientation, like, hey, <laughs> you got to be in touch, know what's going on, you know? So they would be, like, shocked. They would be shocked that uh, their child wasn't actually in school. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, that was the first thought that mm. you could have decided, you know, not to tell me. And then I'm looking forward to graduation. And it's like, oh, mom, yo, I forgot to tell you, by the way. You know? <laughs> by the way, I stopped that stuff, you know, a year ago. Yeah. You know? Mm. So I respected you uh, coming to let me know. Uh, and the way you presented it um, is actually like one of my uh, philosophies too in life, you know? Mm. Uh, like, how they say, make hair while the sun shines. You, you know, you say, hey, here is what you want to do. Uh, you feel like the opportunity has presented itself. Mm. So you want to go ahead and seize it. Uh, but don't forget, <laughs> you also told me after <laughs> that, you know, you just get it go. you know, after that, everything settles down. Then you can, you know, you're talking about just a year to go, you know, and the other day, I woke up and I was praying about it. You know, I pray. <laughs> you think it's what I pray. Yeah, you know? yeah. I didn't want to embarrass you like starting our podcast with you like, oh, let's say a word of prayer. Okay? No, that's fine. If but you I'm wanted to say, yeah. you know, but I prayed before I came. You okay. know, I was like, hey, um, you know, hope it touches somebody in a positive way, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, uh, you said, um, you know, you want to seize the opportunity because certain things present themselves and, uh, you know, they don't last. You know, mm -hmm. So you go ahead. If there's one thing um, I know is that for some reasons, I'm able to discern, like all of you, I know you more than you think. You know, mm -hmm. like I know, okay, you're capable of this. Your other sibling, this is what they are capable of doing this and that. And I know that, you you know, like uh, right at the time, now up to today, I knew that you put some thought in it. Mm. And you had a strategy or what you were going to do, you know? Uh, you try to explain it a little. You had something going, blah, blah, blah. You know, then later on, um, you know, you would uh, you would just seize the opportunity and see where. Mm. You know? uh, I said, okay. You know, I trust your judgment. And I trusted your judgment so much, and I still do. Because you proved yourself, you proven yourself over and over uh, that, you know, you are strong and, you know, you can handle advers uh, adversity. Uh, whenever, uh, you know, uh, you were playing uh, football. Yeah, mm -hmm. football and uh, all this, you know, like your coach, your greatest cheerleader, you know, uh, everything centered around you. Um, mm -hmm. You had that tier, SL tier, and then at the same time, Coach White also died. Mm. I mean, I was losing it myself, like just imagining what was going on in your head. Mm. So in the interim, then you had to go through all that surgery, and then I was in law school. It was one of the most difficult uh, periods of my life. Mm. So I'm calling the school because, you know, I'm saying, hey, he's very conscientious. Maybe he's just trying not to stress me. I don't know what's going on in his mind, but his life has been football, football, and this. I called the coaches. I was like, oh, my God, can you keep an eye on him for me? Talk to him, encourage him, because I'm so concerned. All he thinks, talks about does is football and then, mm. you know, you know, now surgery and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, when you overcame that, in the way you did, I had all the confidence. Yeah. I had all the confidence in the world and I trusted your judgment. Mm. That if this guy got out of this without any depression, like, you know, or, you know, because people take things differently. Yeah. Somebody will sit back there and, I, oh, once upon a time, would I be in the football? You know, <laughs> day, yeah, if yeah. not for that, whatever. So, because of that, look at mm. me now, I have nothing else to do, like my dream shatter. So, therefore, don't play. You know? Yeah. So, when you told me that, just like even sports, I told you guys, I'm not the parent that will be pushing a child to do what they're not interested in. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, if you're kind of confused, you know, like on declare major, like the way they do with schools, you are not, you are indecisive. Then I can, you know, give you a little, oh, do you, you know, you are really good at this. Have you considered this? Mm -hmm. But when you have a child that really knows what they really want and they are going about it the right way, all you need to do is provide that support. Mm -hmm. You know, like, mm -hmm. hey, what can I do to help you with it? You know, like, hey, how can I, you know, uh, you know, how, 
just use me like how can i help you mm. to attain your dreams yeah. so that was my thought and it didn't shake me the only thing that bothered me was like huh he's going to go back later <laughs> and i was worried about your father mm. more see i'm I'm kind of more flexible and mm. like i say please, and then dad's you like don't judge me yeah yeah because Uh, I'm a people's place. It may not be a good thing, but that's me. That's my character. Uh, it's or uh, it's really bad. I kind of try to control it to some extent, but you know, by having a closer relationship with God, mm-hmm. um, you know, everything I'm doing, I'm just like, are my children gonna be proud of me? You know, mm-hmm. or if. If Russell sees this, will he be disappointed? You understand? Like I'm always like living my life, you know, mm. to make other people like proud, like you know, but not outside, whatever. But just trying to, you know, be the best. You know, like they say, yeah. trees don't eat out of their fruits. You know what I mean? Mm. Am I tasty? It's my fruit. Like you know, are my children enjoying the fruits? Like if I do this, how is it gonna impact you? Mm. So to some extent whatever decision I'm making if I'm striving and I'm working hard to be successful I'm like hey I'm going to be successful for my children I'm going to do this mm. and I'm going to live long so I can you know my children can still have me like you know yeah. <laughs> so anyway it's your dad that was more concerned about mm. like you know how will he take it Yeah, yeah. You know, because it's such a, you know, it's a like, big yeah, it's a big, that was like one of his like first child. Yeah, first child and then also just like it's big on I mean school's big in our culture. For yeah. everybody I like mean dad has Nigeria. like I mean you guys are very everybody. educated. Dad yeah, has like everybody. three degrees like, like yeah. even now in Nigeria like if you go there almost all these people do everybody education is the surest see here there are other opportunities, okay? Yeah. When you go to Africa in Nigeria the only way out of poverty or to have a good life you know nigerians like good life that's why any little whatever we are like hey look at me. you know like yeah. we want to display mm-hmm. you know we want to you know like flaunt it and show yeah you know, what like we have like yeah. showcase you know like proud of our accomplishments mm. so not graduating from college is a non starter Mm. You understand? It's almost because like that's the fastest way to That's the fastest way because yeah. even when you want to go to politics now you see most of them are like now the in thing now college degree is nothing. Now everybody is like they want to be oh doctor this doctor this you know. Mm. So uh even professionals. Oh you are a lawyer. Oh I have masters in law. Oh I got PhD you know. Yeah. So uh and then you know your brother is like oh my son. Yeah. Oh my you know. He likes to he uh I mean I think like any proud dad. proud dad yeah, yeah. he anytime it's like anytime we would meet someone this is this is my son this a footballer exactly. one time he scored three <laughs> touchdowns in one game <laughs> then i'll be telling him nobody want to you know yeah i'll just be like i'll be like dad uh hello my name is so i'm uh, like sorry i don't know so. and he does the same thing to me yeah oh this is uh my wife you know i told him i'm like no It's like, are you embarrassed? Are you ashamed yeah. of being a lawyer? You you go around and you don't even know to this day, dad? even even to this day, my dad will go, "Oh, this is my son. He is a world champion powerlifter. He is the best two in his class. Time. It's two time, two time. <laughs> two time. Is, is, is it five time now? <laughs> no, dad, it's still two time. <laughs> still two time. So, so anyway, yeah, yeah. That, I was concerned about you know him, but uh, you know, kind of easy me to it like hey you know like we just got to be supported it's not like somebody is out there doing something bad on the street and uh, we have to and i think just you know having a relationship with god has really helped me too mm. like the truth of the matter is god has people and it has a path for everybody mm. okay so uh often times we put too much pressure on people pursuing you know like for our own egos you like mm. going the path that we want them to go and then we are we sit back and then we are like disappointed when they don't excel in the path that we directed them mm. you know so i look at that play out in so many ways Uh, right now uh, we have like uh, family members that you know trying to do whatever you know 
you be a lawyer. Okay? Mm. It's not every lawyer that is successful. <coughs> it's not all doctors that are doing very well. Some of them hate what they do. Financially they're okay, but mm. are they happy with what they are doing? Yeah. Are they at peace? Are, you know, have they found that personal fulfillment mm. that makes you want to live and enjoy life? So, in as much as I want the best for you all, the way I look at education is, you know, nothing in life is guaranteed, but it expands your opportunities. In other ways, it's not supposed to limit you. Yeah. You can be whoever you want to be, like, you know, how you're a PhD, how whatever. If you want to go, if you go to all these cab drivers, most of them is like, oh, I'm Dr. This. And they used to laugh, like, mm. you know, oh, you go to New York, everybody's like, oh, all Nigerians, they're driving cab, Dr. This. Because education will humble you. Yeah. It will humble you in a positive way. You come to the understanding, you come to the realization that, listen, I didn't go to school to limit my opportunities. I went to expand them. Mm. If that means I have to drive a cab now, you are proud of driving a cab. If that's what you would do to take, to, take you to where you want to be, you are proud of doing it. Mm. Because by then, you know, you know, like nobody's going to intimidate you or whatever. It's like, yeah, I may be driving a car right now, but I'm heading somewhere. Mm. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Maybe I'm driving this car. So if someone else may be driving the car too. Mm. How are they using that money? Maybe with your education, you have the talents and you have that exposure. You have that knowledge base that will help you invest wisely. Mm. So from cab, tomorrow you are something else. Yeah, yeah. You understand? So that's the only reason. Like it gives you that cushion. It expands your opportunities in life. And then it gives you that level of confidence too. Mm. I am telling you, whatever mm -hmm. the case, like, uh, you know, now it's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, do you know tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, you understand yeah. what I mean? Maybe mm. down the line you'll be like, hey, if I had known. So, uh, since you asked me that question, <laughs> I prayed about it the other day. I said, you have one more year. Guess what? Right now, apart from professional courses, medical school, <clears> law <throat> school, all this, whatever, you know, most of the programs, most of the degree programs, they have online classes. True. Do you know that if you say, oh, look at how many years you stayed out, right? Mm -hmm. It's no big deal. You say, one class a year or maybe once uh, better still summer is a year and a half mm -hmm. i mean no sorry a month and a half and then they have that fast paced one yeah. so <laughs> senior level classes yeah they are not that you know demanding okay but then you are just trying to round up and finish up okay mm -hmm. and then one you know like one class you wake up 4 a.m 5 a.m., you just say, okay, this time, just like you have to enjoy life. You yeah, can't yeah. just be working and not having fun. So you're like, hey, maybe put in one hour, okay, uh, uh, of summer, maybe in the morning, online. You don't even have to sit in the class. True. I mean, a big part of the reason why I did drop out was because... The demand. The, the demand. No, no the, the, I didn't feel a part of the college culture. Yeah. So it didn't even feel like I was going to college because the way that, that U of H's uh, kinesiology degree mm -hmm. or their, their system worked was that 80% of my classes were online and I only had like maybe two classes to actually physically go attend to. So it made it a lot easier to just cut it. So I was just like, I mean, you know, it's not serving me at this moment and there's like an opportunity presenting itself. Yeah. And honestly, it was just me being like, I don't want any other obligations or have anything in the back exactly. of my mind as I pursue what is exactly. in front of me right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and then you can just, uh, uh, what, how do I say, you know, they'll say, hey, flip the switch, right? Yeah. And so, then, you know, one, uh, you know, they had two summers. Instead of that dready uh, four months or this and that, you just like, hey, they're offering this uh, summer one, Maybe mm -hmm. take one class, summer one, one month you're done, you wake up at four, you know, like do assignment, but you're good on the computer, look at some of us graduated yeah. with uh, no much uh, literacy with typing, and I say day day, but when you are fast, like, you know, then, can you imagine the kind of impact? 
Mm-hmm. That you, you know, if you're not doing it for yourself, like I said, all people is like, oh, it's all about self This man, yeah. you sometimes you have to cut it for other people. Whether you like it or not, yeah, yeah. you are impacting so many people. Mm. They're looking at you as their role model. Okay? So, you know how they follow role models. It's like, oh, uh, this person, you know, it's a high school, you know, they go like a one in a million. Yeah. Uh, so, so to, to that point, too, I always tell people whenever people come to me because uh, people are like, I'm in college right now and I want to drop out. I'm like, no, oh, don't. I I said, Do I not drop do out. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. don't drop out. Finish school. Because at, Kanye has this funny line. He's like, you, uh, they got the dropout keeping kids in the school. Mm-hmm. So our, um, this young kid, he came, to, he came to Houston last summer. It's Ben. Shout out to Ben. He came to Houston uh, for the summer yeah. and he became so enamored with what we were doing here that he wanted to drop out that because he was, he was about like to, you. he wanted to, yeah, he wanted to no, basically do all of our, like do the kind of yeah, stuff that I we're doing here. I remember him. He, he wanted to, uh, he was, it was going to be his first, this is like his first semester in college right now. Right. Yeah. So he, he came to the gym one day. It was like about the time for him to go back home mm-hmm. because he's from, he was like 17, 18. Oh, he has spent like his last dime saved up here to like come and like be around us <laughs> oh, and he came to me he came to me was like i know so he was he was going around he's like hey i'm making a video convincing my parents that i should drop out <laughs> He's like Russ. Can That's you? That's a good kid, though. Yeah. Like try to come because I'm telling you, don't just drop out. Quiet. Yeah, drop out not saying anything. Going to school, and then at the end of the day, it's like, oops. Yeah. yeah and he came know. to me, and he's like, "Hey," I was like, oh. "Look, man, go to call, like, go to school, yeah. like, just go to school. Um, I don't feel comfortable being in this video or making this video for you. I'm not. I would never tell another child to like drop out of school. That's something I did for they myself, but exactly. it's because I have such a you already I, knew where you were heading. Yeah, I knew you where know, I was I heading. Know. And then I just, from, from you, I have this, uh-huh. like, innate belief that no matter what, I'm going to find a way to make mm-hmm. it happen. Exactly. And some kids don't have they that. Don't have it. Like, not, like, in a mean yeah. way, but I feel like I had a support system because uh, you were always behind me telling me I could do anything that I want to do. So mm-hmm. I felt that, like, me dropping out of college, like, whether I was going to go back or not, mm-hmm. I knew I was going to find a way. A way. So, and some that kids are not like, some, yeah, some that kids, they drop out and that's the end of everything. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know what the situation was. I just told them, I was like, and I tell kids all the time, stay in school. You could do both. You really can't. Like, you don't have to, you know. <laughs> you see, the thing is that they, drop uh, out. it's the young generation, they, I, I mean, I, I, it's okay to look up to successful people. And that's why, that's why I was telling you that I like uh, podcasts a lot. Mm-hmm. Now that I, you know, sometimes I don't even, I had to, you know, kind of create a time to be doing it because uh, I have work, I have documents to draft, I have paper, you know, have mm-hmm. letters to write. Yeah. And then uh, sometimes you get into it, it's like, oh my God, just want to watch it. Yeah, you just want to watch it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but, you know, the truth of the matter is, it's not easy to get up there. Yeah. It, it, it takes a lot of determination and uh, resilience, okay? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you have to be built in order to withstand the heat mm-hmm. and the storms that will come as you're going up. Mm-hmm. If not, the storms will take you down. Can you imagine? I remember the first video that you made. <laughs> Man, we were, I was like, everybody I knew, I was sending everywhere, say it, we get like, people will watch it, everybody yeah. will watch it, we too. So, uh, I was targeting a thousand something, and then, and that's, I think that's what really uh, is helping you push forward, mm. that spirit of gratitude, and, mm. you know, understanding that life takes hard work, you have to work hard. Yeah. People that haven't made it, it's not like they're not working hard enough. It's just that you work hard and then everybody's time of success is not the same. Other people make it early in life, some later, some in the middle. You just keep on pushing because you don't know where you are on. This thing is spied off. Of. Mm. So when you got over 800 views, you were so happy. <laughs> I was like, son, I'm sharing it with people. It's like, mom, I got over 800 views. I said, oh, is that much? He said, that's a lot for a first video. Yeah, I was yeah. like, okay. So, but it takes a long time to mm. build. So you can imagine this uh, social media, how they are, you know, attacking these people, that people, children, uh, being 
affected in detrimental ways like you know so they see uh, their friend post a video and they get a thousand views you don't know their family background you don't know who knows them or how you know their interaction with people mm -hmm. and then you post your own video and you get one view mm -hmm. you understand and then other people they don't understand the process they want to be like hey I want to throw that video and I want it to go viral. Yeah. And you are thinking whatever you put out there, everybody is going to so like it, it's going to go viral. And then you get one view, then two views. You understand? And yeah. Pay attention to those things. I remember even back you in the... You had that resilience. Yeah, I think even back in the day, I used to get excited like... One person joins so or... Yeah, I'd be, be like, I'd be like, yeah, I'd be like, oh, wow, like... 10 people watched or yeah. like 30 people watched. Like I used to be excited about that. We saw everybody that has that. Mm. Some people want to do something. They don't have, it takes time. Mm. And then sometimes you think you made it to the top at your peak. Then what determines the crossover? You feel you, you, you face rejection mm. just at the peak at the time that you think you are all of that. And then someone said, Oh, you know, that's why I like the podcast. Yeah. Uh, Chris Brown, uh, say he experienced that with P. Daddy. It's like, oh, P. Diddy? I pa yeah. Okay. Yeah. P. Diddy, okay. Uh, oh, I passed this one or something. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. At his peak, like when he thought, but he didn't crush him. Mm. He said, oh, he left. Of course, he felt bad as a little child, like in his teenage years. Mm. But then he said, you know, I'm going to work harder. You yeah. Know? So they won't pass me again next time. You know, something like that. Yeah. You know? But I always tell people, like, uh, as, as I've gotten older and I've surrounded myself with more individuals, I start to realize that a lot of people don't have parental support as much or they don't have those deep conversations with their parents, which it, I, I don't know why it took me so long to realize that later in life. But I'm like, damn, I thought everyone's parents believed in them or like, you know, breathed the light into them. And it's, and it's, it's kind of sad in a sense because when I think about all the conversations that we had growing up, like, I don't know if you remember, sometimes I would just go to my mom's room and we would talk for hours. <laughs> like this, like these, like we would have podcasts. It will, I wouldn't have, she would be the one talking. I just listen. And I would never say, I would never interrupt her. I would never say anything back. I would just listen. But I listened to everything that you would say. You would say that, you know, in this life, you have to keep working. You have to keep progressing. And one of the things that you would always tell me is that no matter what I wanted to do, I could achieve it as long as I worked hard and put in the work. Um, and that's one of the things that stuck with me. So it's like, for me, I, I think it's like a good and bad thing. Sometimes I think I'm invincible, not because I, I'm just like arrogantly invincible. It's because I know that I'll do whatever it takes to, to, to be, yeah, to get what I want. Where you want to be. And I, I mean, I got that from you. Cause I, now that I hear you talk, like, I feel as though you're, you're almost in the same way too. It's more so just like, I don't care what's in front of me. I'm going to attack it. And I'm yeah. going to, you, you do it in a different way. Yeah. I do it a lot. You do it in a very light, warm way. Yeah. Mine's a little bit different. <laughs> well, you know, but, that's the truth though, because <clears throat> for me, uh, I think I've said it over, over, uh, your dad will attest to it too. Mm. Uh, anytime things are like rough, you know, mm. oh my God, that's, that's when I have the most hope. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm true. Like, something is coming. Like, yeah. you know, the way <laughs> I feel, you know, as difficult as it is right now, it mm. means that something good is coming. Yeah. So I just got to keep on pushing. Like, there's no way I have a storm if there's not, you know, without a sunlight. Mm. This is like a storm that I'm experiencing right now. So yeah. then at that point, I'm kind of happy. I may be feeling down, but then yeah. I'm already looking ahead. I've never seen like you. Uh, come, I've you never know? seen you in my 29 years. I've never seen you sad, really. <laughs> like, no, I'm being serious. When I think about it, I don't really remember a time where like, you know, the only reason is because, um, I mean, I, you know, I come in like I used to like, oh my God, why is this thing so messed up, this and that? Yeah. But no, I'm that's different. Yeah. Laughing, yeah. Know? It's like, like, no, that's different. You know, I don't I, sit down and do all this. Yeah. Thing. When like, you don't, you wouldn't come home from work or school, mm -hmm. like in a, like in a bad mood, mm -hmm. like, which is, I never experienced that. Like yeah. everything was very like. If you're not laughing, maybe you're just tired and like you're just yeah. going to bed. Like you just go straight to bed or something like that. Um, I remember if you guys, I mean, you guys don't know this. My mom went, my mom went to law school uh, my senior year of college. Or no, my senior year of high school, sorry. 
and it was it was weird because it didn't it didn't even feel like you were at law school because you still did a lot of the stuff that to do. yeah that that like a mom would do you would make breakfast you would have uh you would have devin's tea ready uh -huh. which is hot chocolate in the morning you would come home from law school because she went to tsu uh you would come home from law school drive about like 45 maybe no even longer than that Long probably like an hour traffic. 30 yeah, you're just stuck in traffic, traffic. mind you oh. from houston to sugarland she'd be stuck in traffic for an hour 30 come home after being at school all day cook dinner not even just like some like not some bullshit dinner like, like three uh, you know it's like it's a three course like i'm protein yeah protein <laughs> carbs vegetables every single night and this wasn't like some simple stuff it'd be like stuffed chicken breast with loaded mashed potatoes and like grilled asparagus and all that kind of stuff and then um one of my vivid memories would be like you so tired that you're you're fought like you're holding this and i trying to sleep no no reading like reading like your law books uh -huh. and you'd be sleep in your yeah, law book I mean, yeah. and i would come and every single night i would, I would come downstairs and make Turn sure i'm like lights. i'm like her lights on but it's just, so i would turn her lights off and then like you know put the sheets over her take the take the uh the the book away and put it down because you'd be knocked out mm -hmm. like but i as i've gotten older i realized i'm like you're doing all that kind of stuff while going to law school what was the the mindset because i feel like most individuals not just parents most individuals they'd make excuses as to why uh, i'm definitely not like them, those kids are gonna have to figure something else tonight because you know i'm tired <laughs> <laughs> okay the mindset has always been the determination to make it mm. i know that uh, success does not come easy even when you're successful you have to work uh, hard as much as when you are pursuing it mm. in order to maintain it, in order to keep it. But, uh, you know, the thing that has always driven me is back to you guys again. Mm. Uh, like, um, when I had uh, my children, I remember back from when you were little, because I have four children. Mm. So back then, it was, I think, the uh, Clinton days or whatever, where like, the, uh, I mean, I don't mean it in a bad way. Uh, I may have benefited somewhere along the line, but it was more of, it was a lot of, you know, all these um, checks like single parents or welfare, yeah, you know, yeah, welfare yeah. checks, that's the name, welfare checks, mm -hmm. welfare checks. Yeah. So, I mean, I looked at it like you had to be like at the bottom of the bottom in the society to be eligible, you know, to go for welfare checks. Mm. So, usually, anytime they will see you with many children, you have that look. You know, like, they have, like, many, she has many children, I bet she's on welfare or some kind of whatever. So, mm -hmm. I made up my mind, like, hey, uh, first and foremost, I make sure that you all look much better than me. That one was, time, I, yeah. I bought you, like, one time I went to the store, I think I bought you nine pairs of shoes. Yeah. Different colors. Oh, so you're the reason. <laughs> she's a y'all can blame my mom Every i'm the reason why i love shoes color out there yeah so all your outfits had to no match. i wouldn't if you look at our our child pictures we were dressed to a t like, the outfit had, I everything mean, like, they go with, you know i had to do that color coordination color, all that kind of color stuff coordination I, I remember looking at some of my baby like my baby in like uh toddler pictures yes. i was like 90s style drip oh, like Lord. I mean, reebok you know, she like dress and one like all that kind of stuff it was, what? yeah because to me that's like sending a message out there <laughs> don't look at my fortune and think i'm on welfare you know, it's like it was a pride thing like i'm yeah. not gonna be on no welfare hand me down money i mean i'm sorry what's like, that thing you said at brunch the other day you said it doesn't matter how down bad i am i'm gonna look fly or yeah, something gonna, like that okay whenever if i'm broke or whenever i'm really down psychology you know whatever it is i look my best <laughs> Because I don't want you to look at me. I think you know. So yeah, yeah. Like you know, I don't want to come out looking like the whole world is against me or like yeah, yeah. some pity party or whatever. Like you will never know if you say you're gonna accept. I tell you that, or, or you come to me for help, and then I'm like, I'm sorry, not right now, or something. You know. Yeah. So I used to like you know just do it just to prove it. You know, not not like I'm proving a point, but I felt good. So. 
that has been, you know, you all have been my, uh, uh, the most, uh, my driving this in force mm. to doing whatever, you know, I could at each point. Mm. So whenever um, you all grow up too, it's just like, okay, how am I going to, you know, keep on, you know? Mm. So I'm not going to be a liability. <laughs> you know, like from caring for your children, I don't want to be like a burden or liability for them later on in yeah. life. Because, you know, it turns around. Because we take care of children, eventually they end up with you. But so, it would just be insane, though, because like we were, we were all grown, base not grown, but like we were old enough to where it's like, I mean, you should be able to understand. I mean, I mean, you know how you know, yeah, the, the rest are, but yeah, but you know, I mean, at the end of the day, though, um, whenever you uh, you look at life, a parent's uh, responsibility never stops. Yeah, you know? true. I don't mm. care how old. Uh, you you are like mm. if we show up at home now it's like hey what do you want i'm not gonna be like oh you're old and i take kitchen or do this and that you know mm. what i mean so it's more like um it, it's just a special feeling uh being there um to support whatever uh you are doing mm. i just you know like uh, uh to help him whichever way possible uh, one thing that you mentioned that is very, very important, I think for you and for young people and older people, you all have done something to me. The other day, uh, you don't know that I shared your messages to me with my friends. Really? <laughs> Do you remember one time I was going to school? Mm. That first year, it was like, that's when you the cut off. You make it or you're out. Yeah. So I'm telling you, I'll never give up, never give up. You yeah, know. law school is... Uh, yeah. So yeah. it was crazy, right? Yeah. So I was going that day and then crying, like, you know, like, oh my gosh, how can I, you know, like, this is too much. Why did I, what did I get myself into? Like, oh my God, this... Uh, then your message, then you drop a message mm -hmm. of encouragement, like something along the lines that ma. I am so proud of you. Every day you wake up, you go. So I'm like, look at this child of mine, like young, <laughs> like, you know? So what that taught me, and I was reflecting on it. I mean, ever since then, I was like, wow, this is unbelievable. This wisdom, this message, like God is amazing. How, mm. did, how on earth am I feeling this way? And then at the same time, my son sends this message. That's mm. God telling me, you're doing the right thing, keep pushing. Mm. So, the other day, I don't know if I posted something or I thought about posting it on my Instagram. So, I was like, you better raise your children with some solid fundamental values so that whenever you need, you know, you need encouragement, mm. okay, they will bounce back. Yeah. They will bounce back to you. Because oftentimes, you know, the way, the way you are with like, especially you, and, you know, the way you send the message with, you know, like it's so touching, like, you know, encouraging, it's okay, maybe this may be happening right now, this and that. Even them are like coming out with some messages. Like, what? <laughs> no, Devin kind of shocked me lately. Yeah. yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, you know, this year, I don't know what the heck. I'm like, thank you, there's Jesus. Been, there's like, been times he's shown like, I'm like. Yeah, yeah, you told me, mom, this year, this and that. Yesterday he was preaching to me. So I was like, don't ever give up. Because what you instill in your children. Guess if you instill nothing, you get nothing. When you get older and you need them. Mm. I mean, like, challenges, life happens yeah. until you die. Mm. Okay? It happens to old, younger, whatever. All you have in this life, family, friends, people, you know. If anything happens, those are the, your close-knit friends, mm. your family, that are there and you, everybody needs encouragement. You see, like, preachers, you know, me, anybody, I'm not a preacher, but what I'm saying is that sometimes I encourage sometimes I wonder. others. You understand that, <laughs> yeah. you know, my friends, you know, my friends, close-knit friends, we support each other. Mm. But, you know, anytime you can, you have everything inside of you, 
to you you know like oh no condition is permanent the harder the battle the sweeter the victory you know uh you know you pass through storm but you know it's not forever i mean you know all kinds of stuff them matters that you have mm. wherever you are in it wherever the storm hits you you have temporary amnesia mm. you are memory everything just fades like you can't apply it's almost like they advise doctors yeah when you are sick you are a doctor you don't treat your, you you know you go seek treatment from another doctor mm. when you are a lawyer would they see recommend you have an issue mm. let another lawyer represent you mm. so in the same way whenever you facing the storms of life you need somebody to tell you those things that motivate you those motivational quotes the encouragement and gets the closest people to you your family your children so if they don't know what to say you're just laying there and maybe the the one thing that they open their mouth and say is totally off point you know what i mean mm. wisdom i feel like people are born with wisdom they yeah. you know they're born with it like but you can also ask mm. experience does not equate wisdom yeah okay because experience yeah you know it's not you know you could be as old as 200 years or whatever you know a young person may have much more wisdom than you mm. and vice versa but you know people can pray and they you know yeah. they gifted but there are people born with it so i like the fact that uh you all have that instilled in you mm. to the point that you now tell me you now say to me <laughs> or encourage me yeah. when you feel like oh mom is just overwhelmed with something no nah, i can just appreciate sometimes that. yeah sometimes i just feel it I don't know. Mm. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's just like, it's the same way how sometimes like you might call me or something. It's just, you just kind of feel it. You know what? You, you know what you did to me one time? Oh my God. I am so, you know, like my friends know that it's not bragging. I woke up one day. It wasn't my strong time. You know, you get older, you have so much financial responsibilities. Like you put out so much. It takes time to build and invest. Okay. So I'm, I woke up and I lay down in my bed and I'm like, oh my gosh. <sighs> All of a sudden, my phone beep, you know, like a little something like message. So I saw, can I say? Yeah, I $6,000. <laughs> okay. I'm talking about how many years ago at his, <laughs> I'm telling you all, uh, it's not money. It's not just money, okay? You know, mm. uh, 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 I'm not talking about financial, but I'm talking about he saying that he feels it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I cried. I got on my knees. I was like, ha, one time I was going to school at the point of dropping out. Like, I mean, not dropping out, but at the breaking, you know, like point. Then he sends me this message. I read the message, I cried, and it's like God telling me, keep going. Keep, you know, you're doing the right thing. Mm. And then here am I laying down here. <laughs> $6,000. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about, I think it must have been five years ago or some kind of It was of a while time. ago, yeah. It was a while. Why ago? So I said, what the heck? So then I look, it's like, I just thought about you. And, you know, it's just this good feeling anytime. I able, I'm able to do something for you. I was like, I was speechless. <laughs> I was speechless. One or the whatever that went through my first life, it's not gonna, you know, I can't blow this, you know? Yeah. yeah. One of the whatever that went through all this farm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, I got it. You know, this is too special. Yeah. You know, and it's just being like, you know, I'm not talking about like, you know, other stuff and, you know, like, and then, you know, like, hey, ma, your 50th birthday. Um, oh, yeah. Wherever you want to go. Yeah. I that said, that was one of my favorites just because uh, I know, like, you I know like you and dad like to travel and see the world yeah, and stuff. So I was like, mind. it would be cool because when we were growing up, my dad, like, uh, got a, a really big, he was, like, basically, Good like, job. yeah, he got, he basically became, like, the head of the FDA in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So, like, mm -hmm. one of the biggest things that you guys love to do is travel, travel. and uh, see the world. Mm -hmm. So, uh and I was never a part of those vacations because they didn't want to football. 
Did yeah, I wanted know? to stay back and train for football. Like, I'd I'd be back in the summertime. Like, literally, y'all think like I just like came up on this uh, fitness stuff and all that, but like I love just physically challenging myself. So I would stay back literally to work out while my family traveled the world, like oh, Dubai. So you didn't want to go. Yeah. Dubai. You, uh, Lebanon, you guys had to force me Egypt. to go to Egypt. Oh, you went to Egypt. Yeah. I, I feel so bad I because said. I made it a miserable time on purpose. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You didn't want to take like, oh, yeah, I was like, no, I'm not taking a picture. You know, yeah, like, yeah. I was, that was, you know, yeah, you're was talking bad. about experiences. We were in Egypt. Like we were eating on boats and yeah, like going to the pyramids. Yeah. I was being a little, a little, Shit. He, he was okay. like, I don't want to travel. Why do we all of have to travel? So I was like, yeah. I'm worried. You know, and then I'm talking about sometimes like, you know, it's like, hey, let them have experience. Business class. Man, we'll be like traveling <laughs> British Airways, going to London, yeah, going man. to Paris. Yeah, you know, Paris went to Paris. Yeah, yeah. New York. You know, New York. And I would be like making it like, I would make it a, yeah, I would make it a so point. My picture. Yeah, I would I make it a point. Like I would fight the siblings on purpose to Grand cause. Bahamas. Yeah, we went to the bomb. That's how I had a good time. Man. Yeah, yeah, that was it. And then we fell. Oh my god! That was spring break. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I told myself I was like, it would be it would be nice if I'm able to uh, do that for my mom. So I was like, hey, like wherever you want to go, like it, literally anywhere in the world, I'll I'll fund it. Like yeah. I want you to go experience that. And then you chose uh, you chose China. So then I said China. You know, yeah, went to Shanghai. Yeah, and yeah. It was like one of the. I mean, I had a blast. I got my yeah. husband around. You know, like yeah. Uh, you know, really had a good time. It yeah. was quite a treat that I always brag about. I mean, not brag with great humor. No, I mean, yeah. yeah but I remember I, I was so. It. Yeah. I was like, how old is your son? <laughs> I say, you don't have to be too old to give your parents a treat. So when you can do it, you know, when you can do it, you do. If you can, it's like little things like, hey, mom, do you need help around the house? <clears throat> you know, mm. like just different, you know, like yeah. just those little things. Uh, they go a long way, you mm. know. Honor your father and your mother. Yeah, it's the only, it's the only commandment that I always tell people. I've never raise your voice. Or I've nothing. never like yelled at y'all or like spoke no. back to y'all ever in my life. No, only people. I tell everybody. Yeah. I tell the siblings. They're yeah. like, oh, one time my daughter was like, I know why you, uh, you know, you, you know. You're cool. <laughs> Russell, because he thinks just like you. He thinks like you. He asks you, you are believing the same thing. Who want to hear all this uh, motivational stuff? <laughs> I said, who want to hear it, baby girl? Why is it that whenever, if you have any, something is like, ma, ma, oh my God. I said, what do I tell you? If you don't like it, why you call me? You know, you're going to hear some encouraging words. Like, yeah. Yeah. No. I feel as though, like, because this is going to, this is going to feed into my next question. What are some things that, you see from the younger generation that you would instill into them like act like uh i mean you you do it all the time whenever you used to come around to the gym and stuff you'd always just be giving people motivational yeah. no you must continue going da 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 this and the third yeah. what are some things you see with the younger generation that you would tell them to work on okay oh. first and foremost um one thing I see, and uh, my youngest one tried to correct me. Uh, whenever we keep emphasizing hard work, hard work, he said, mm. Mom, you know, um, it's not like we don't want to work. Your generation work hard. We work smart. So I'm like, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I was like, I like that, you know. Uh -huh. uh, the truth of the matter is, you know, believe in yourself, okay? Mm. Look for what you like to do. If, you, if you're trying to figure out what is it that you, you want to do, because sometimes you're like, you're confused, even adults. You, you know, you get to a stage... Age you're like, oh, you know, that's why I put change profession. Sometimes it's not yeah. just money. It's like, oh, I really don't want to be doing this, yeah. this, and that. What is that one thing that keeps you up, that you are excited about doing, that you think you can curve your livelihood around eventually? You know, like, mm. you, 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 you identify what you want to do, you work on it, and just be patient. Mm. Success does not come overnight. It's like you got to sow a seed. And it's not funny. It's dirty. Nobody wants to sow 
because the soil is muddy, it's wet, it's nasty. Okay, some things that you don't even want to touch. Even when you put gloves, you don't like the side. And then you finally sow it. Okay, make sure that you are sowing on, you know, when they say like a fetal soil, on mm. the rich soil, so that it will take root. Mm. You know, like the environment that you are sowing in matters. Okay, mm. like whenever you, 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 you cling on to people, okay, like are doing similar, you know, like we impact you, okay, that you can learn uh, from, like a process along the way, knowing that when you sow on good soil, there is no way that you won't reap harvest because mm. that's where, you know, once you do the work that you are required to do, then God comes in and puts it all together and then you, you know, you groom, and then you are able to, uh, you know, reap plentiful harvest. Mm. That's where you find fulfillment, you find joy, and, uh, you know, you just continue. And also, do good. Mm. Do good. It's easier, you know, like, it, it, it seems, you know, it sounds easy, but it's not easy. That's why it's like, Almost like everybody says it do good because saying it is more than you know the actual doing you know doing the uh, the good stuff. Like try to impact people, you yeah. know, in a positive way. Mm. Like uh, support whatever you want to do. Don't be the other person, you know. Like show grace. If you want to be successful, you can't be successful if you hate successful people. <laughs> you understand. <laughs> You can. Uh, wait, can you say that again? You can't be successful hating successful people. Yeah, you can't. There you go. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because uh, people that are gifted or know that they want to be, you know, next time, if that's where you are headed, then what are you going to, you know, you, there's no way you hate the place that you are heading to. Mm, mm. You know, yeah. if you don't like, uh, if you hate America, why are you going there? It's <laughs> havoc. If you hate Africa, you, you understand what I mean? Yeah. So uh, where you are heading, if you want to be successful, you're going to love successful people because that's where you are going. You understand? Mm. Or don't go there, you know? Yeah. So uh, it's, you know, all this, you, you, whenever, you, and then uh, gratitude. Find out one thing to, one thing or one person to appreciate or be grateful. Mm. Because people, uh, you know, like, it's such a distorted uh, teaching or saying when people are saying, oh, uh, uh, nobody can give you happiness. Uh, uh, you had to create your own happiness. That is so vague. How do you create your own happiness? Do they tell you the process? <laughs> <laughs> Sit down here and tell someone that is totally depressed and hopeless Oh, create your own happiness. Oh, you, you don't make it, don't let any, you, you, you don't make people, uh, uh, don't let some other people make you, you got to make yourself happy. You got to make yourself happy. That is, anybody that is saying that, they are so unhappy inside. You understand? <laughs> you have to understand the process. How, uh, uh, how does somebody, what makes you happy? Mm. You can't create it. You have to do certain things. It's an act of doing, uh, a mindset, and uh, one of the surest ways that uh, you find out fulfillment through happiness and joy, the easiest way is gratitude mm. or making someone else happy. A little act of kindness because it's almost like a, you know, almost like a smile. Okay? When you uh, make someone happy, Maybe just like opening the door, maybe you go to a grocery store. You yeah. see an elderly person struggling with their cart. And then you're like, hey, sir, can I help you? Mm. Oh, my soul, thank you so much. That joy, you know, that you feel like you've done something good to somebody. Mm. It bounces back at you. You understand? Little acts of kindness mm. will create you <clears> happiness. <throat> and then gratitude. Be grateful. Find one thing. You know, have you been around people that 
Every time it's complaints, every you know, oh, every, yeah. this, everything is like you never see them happy. Never. <laughs> I don't like. I I've noticed. I, if negative like people that complain about anything, yeah. it's like uh, they because always they find something wrong. Yeah, yeah never see good with anything. Yeah, 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 anywhere yeah. you turn, they're gonna find something wrong. Yeah. So I hate. Yeah. I think it, I got there. I like. I hate being with people like that. It's not. It's, and like, when you try to get and then you say this and then they bring another another negative word. You know. Yeah. So yeah, tell yeah, that person, that. oh, you have to be happy because they are, you know they hear that but they don't know. It's mm. a post. It's it's something that you have to give. Yeah. And then it, it, you receive. Okay. You you. You know it's fun. I don't complain much about like a lot of different things. Like I don't I don't. So if I. <laughs> Let's say we go to a restaurant mm -hmm. together, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit there and complain. I'm going to find one thing that I like about the, yes. the place. I'm going to be like, maybe the food wasn't the greatest, but I'll be like, oh, no, it's a nice ambiance. I like the way they built this thing out. Like, I never sit there and dwell on the negative yes. things. And it's very rare that I'll sit there and just go in and in and in and in on something I don't like. You know, uh, it's like a magnifying glass. Yeah. Whatever you focus on will enlarge. Keep your focus on things that are positive. Yeah. So your life will be enlarged with positivity. Find out one thing. Focus on it. Magnify it. It's the same thing in relationships. The only way, if I'm talking oh, about my husband, don't think we are laughing, we are gisting all the time, we don't argue. Sometimes we are arguing, we argue, we disagree on so many things. But then I chose one thing about him that I like. That you know, I'm never bored around him. You understand? Like, even though we are arguing or whatever, he always fights. So we argue, we finish that. Oh, by the way, get on, let's go here. We argue, I say, Oh, this is I can't deal with this. And then it's like, Hey, when are you ready? We're supposed to go and visit. <laughs> then you dress up and start going and talking. You know, you know? Yeah. so you focus on that one thing and make it the center. And you know, that's where you, once the focus is large, it will diminish. The rest of the background, all these other minor things, you won't see them anymore mm. because you know the focus will block the other ones. Yeah, yeah. For formidable relationships, I think um, you have thrown romance out of life. It's very important. Romantic relationships are very important. Mm. The guy, the girls blame the boys. Uh, men blame women. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I say we can do the blame game forever. Yeah. The truth of the matter is that women will say, oh, they were taken advantage of by men in the past. So now they are not putting up with anything anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it used to be uh, this, uh, what, pedigrees, all this, whatever, singing about romance, whatever oh, stuff. Teddy, Teddy pedigrees. Teddy pedigrees, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, all this, uh, better what, you know, all this, whatever. Like, life was good. So mm -hmm. you you were with your person and life centered around it. You were like so happy doing things together. Then it all changed to, you know, uh, uh, you know, all about oh, I'm not gonna suffer or do whatever with any guys anymore because when they are rich, they ditch you, they go for all these mistresses or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm not gonna put up with nothing. Okay. Then it's like oh, where you got? Then the men started referring. To uh, to the ladies, oh, gold diggers, gold diggers. Mm. Okay, from the gold diggers, and then all of a sudden, is this oh oh you know oh bitches bitches. <laughs> you know, like what is going on? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, uh, romance. I never use that word, by the way. I've yeah, never, I've know, never referred like to it. a girl as a b word. You know, yeah. like, I like and I word. wouldn't want you all to use that word no. because it's like you call a girl a bitch. You are calling me a bitch. I'm a, I'm a lady too. You yeah. came from a bitch. <laughs> no, I didn't. You, no. you understand what yeah, I mean? Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, so you know all this uh, because <clears> when you are calling. Already you are angry when you know look at the bitches, you know, like <laughs> Yeah. I hate when whenever whenever men refer to women like that, I just go like oof. Yeah, man, like, on. you know, come on. Like we all have our shortcomings, but you know, we all need some love. It's standing. Yeah. Give love generously. I try my best it. to yeah, I try my best to uh mm. when I can breathe breathe light to other people or do mm -hmm. something nice, like even passing by someone's oh hey, I like your uh, yeah. I like your jacket or like your sweater or something like that. Yeah. Um what's a I think we're we're kind of coming on a close here. Hour 
two hours? Damn. I was like, I told <laughs> myself, I was like, make it. Because I could make this three hours if I really wanted I know, to. Right? Um, but I wanted to keep it like kind of on like the two hour mark. I yeah. wanted to close this video out with uh, two more questions. I wanted to ask you, I'll ask, I'll ask this question first and then we can end on a good note. Okay. What is, uh, you've seen, you know my personality, you know my weaknesses, you know my strong points. What is uh, something as a grown man now that you think that I could work and be better at? Okay. That's a good question. I mean, I haven't... Uh, the one thing that I've noticed, um, you don't want to be confrontational. And I'm not telling you go and be confrontational. Mm. Okay? But as a young man that we have a family tomorrow, mm. okay? And then you are the oldest sibling. Okay, you are, the, you are my oldest child, so you have all these people under you. In Africa, they can live their lives like, oh, you know, you're on your own, do this and that. Mm. Uh, you'll be instrumental in, um, uh, you know, presiding over some family issues. You understand? Oh, okay. yeah. I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. And so, uh, take for instance, maybe, you know, your sister gets married and, you know... Um, to somebody not treating her right, this and that, you know, like mm. they cry, come out to you, you know what to say, or, you know, kind of that leadership automatically falls upon you. You know, your sibling having some issue, sometimes, you know, uh, some kind of support. You know, you have to be the one uh, at the point of that leadership trying to be that glue that leads, you know. So not mm. only are you going to be there for your family, you know, your immediate family, white children, this and that, then you have a rule, okay? Mm. Uh, you know, like you are the leader of yeah. your uh, sibling. So you're going to confront uh, uh, issues that you have to face and address. Mm. You understand? You're going to confront as a business person, even with your career, uh, you have to face them Yeah. Uh, head on. You understand? You yeah. have to, like... You know, just be prepared. Like, mm. hey, something happens, you know, like, you know, you go, you figure out how you want to proceed with it. And then, you know, you are saying, like, hey, you know, listen. Mm. You are a very good listener, by the way. You, mm. you listen. But uh, you, you, you have to uh, encourage or mediate mm. and come to... Uh, uh, decision making uh, process. Yeah. Yeah. Like you had to confront uh, situations and, you know, it's with practice. You're going to make yeah. mistakes in certain decisions. So I feel like uh, as I've, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not like a, I'm not like a confrontation. So if something, not, yeah, if something is like, I just go like, yeah, yeah, I'm done with that. Or like I just move on to something else or I just ignore it. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's something I do a lot. So like if I see like a problem, you address it, you fix it. Yeah. And 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 I, and I, and I think uh, uh, maybe you got that trait uh, from your dad. Your dad will be like, "Oh, I don't want a problem with anybody. I don't want to confront." I just it's ignore things I don't like. Yeah, yeah it, I'll like, just ignore wanna... things that I don't yeah. like. So like, if something, if like, uh, I'm trying to think, like if I have a problem, I just remove that it's easier for me to just remove that individual from like no, 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 my, no, no. <laughs> yeah i know yeah, i know yeah. but it's easier I mean, for it's me okay. to just like no it's not okay no 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 because there are different types of relationships okay yeah, there's yeah. some people that you can't remove can you oh yeah no family? no of course not you understand yeah. but and this person played either like he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day yeah. whenever you uh, uh, issue or problem comes up and you don't resolve it and is somebody uh like a formidable you know, like a relationship. You know, you have like, you know, it's like a tree. Like you mm -hmm. got leaves. So whenever the weather gets dry or so, the tree will shed off the leaves. It's not, but you know, it's not that, they're not that important to its survivor. Yeah. So, you know, you have some friendships or some family, whatever, they are like the branches. You have people who are like roots. You understand? Mm -hmm. And the roots are the ones that will bring you, uh, you know, we go down and you'll be getting your, you know, water, you know, like we keep you alive. Mm. You understand? So, you know, you have like a serious, like, what about your children? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, your spouse. Yeah. You understand? All of them, 
each one of them, even children, you have problems with children. You have this and that. So uh, it, it's not going to be easy. It's not every problem that you just walk away. It's not everybody that you just say, oh, walk away from. Mm. No. You know, communication. You know how they say communication. Mm. Sometimes yeah, yeah. whenever you like, hey, you figure out what, where is this problem coming from? Mm. And sometimes you just let the people, I'm saying it like, you are more like position or leadership all mm. around, you know. So family, then your own family. Yeah. So when issues come up, you communicate, you address them. Mm. And you are, you know, you have the personality to listen, take anger out. Take You're, you're, you're <laughs> not an angry person, but, you know, you just say, hey, like, you know, you think deep. Mm. So, you know, you wake up or you reflect on something, you wonder like, hey, what's going on? What is actually the problem? Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Because that uh, problem-solving technique is something that, uh, you know, um, we develop. Nobody wants it, but, you know, it's good communication. We ease it. Mm. If you can't handle you let the people talk. And then sometimes you let people sit together and discuss and resolve the issues without you even... Yeah, saying, saying much. Saying much. Yeah, yeah. You understand? So, mm. you have to address problems as they come. Mm -hmm. Don't pile them. And don't ignore them. Because mm. if you ignore, they will come back. Yeah. You understand? So, part of uh, being a good leader, you listen, you try to resolve problems. That's just life. Yeah, yeah. Every day, you're either getting in one trouble or problem or getting out of it. Mm. Something comes, you have to address Okay, now this, pro, you know, I have this thing that I have to take care of. You address it. You think you're done. Something else will come up. Mm. So it's just, you know, it's just part of life. Mm. So you have to, you know, uh, know that things will come up that you have to, you know, ah, cool. the center to make a decision. Yeah. And then my last question was going to be, uh, what is something that, because I feel like people don't ask this question a lot. What is uh, something that you absolutely love about yourself? Oh, God, <laughs> what do I love about myself? What I love about myself is this. I don't hold grudges. Yeah, you don't. And one of the yeah. reasons that I don't hold grudges is because I'm outspoken. And that doesn't sit well with some people. Mm -hmm. I mean, other people don't like it, but that's just me. Mm. I do not hold grudges. If I have an issue with you, especially friend, family, and uh, all that, I would just say, you know what, or I'll disagree, I'll let you know. You understand? You know, I mean, and sometimes now that I'm getting older, you know, they say when you're getting older, then, you know, you lose, uh, you know, like you don't censor stuff before you say, you just say whatever, you know, yeah. you have a lose, whatever, but right, I'm actually, uh, I actually know how to make my point across you know like better without you know like uh, making somebody uh, feel really bad I'm conscious of like hey i really don't don't like this like yeah. you know so um once i'm able to say it if something bothers me i say it uh, that's it if you it, like if you offend me or you know you do something i dislike and then I bring it, maybe, uh, first and foremost, I'm like, oh, maybe you didn't intend it that way. Or, you know, I bring it out <laughs> to your attention. Yeah. Your response mm. will matter a lot to me. Mm. Uh, even if, you know, like, if you double down, you're like, oh, you show me that, oh, you really don't care. Mm. Uh, you know, so it's like, oh, you really don't care how I feel. Mm. Okay. So, therefore, you know, either I'm going to tell you, without censoring how I also feel about you. Mm. And then that's, you know, <laughs> yeah. case closed, you yeah. know. But that's mm. the one thing I like. I do not, you know, I'm outspoken. I don't, uh, you know, I don't be a grudges against anybody at all, mm. you know. So... Um, I think that's where we, I, I hold. I, yeah, yeah, I don't, you know, because it will I never forget. And I don't hate, you know, I don't yeah. hate people. If you say something, you do something that I don't, like, I was just like, hey, I'm outspoken here. Like, I'm not going to sit down there. And have, you know, like, and I, I, I toler I don't, I'm so intolerant to uh, foolishness, whatever that is, you mm. know? Like, you know, like, I want, like, substance. I want, you know, like, yeah. give me content, like, something uh, serious. Even 
even uh, that's why I hardly watch uh, all these uh, shows and uh, some of the whatever that people are laughing and I think like oh it's yeah. they made up kind of thing <laughs> like I'm not interested but yeah, yeah. I like the fact that I don't be a grudges yeah. that's why I'm always like yeah I, I'm it's not that I like actively wish harm on people but I just I remember and I'll and if you come to me I'll bring it up I'm like no nah, like, <laughs> remember that like you nah, know I'm why good. because you don't discuss that, you know, because sometimes somebody will do something, but mm-hmm. whenever you true, yeah, because then I won't yeah. say anything, but then, then I'll, that's it. yeah, that's, that's it. what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah I need to be you will fight, so runs away, leaves to fight another day. Yeah, you understand. But if somebody mm-hmm. something comes up and then you address it, and then the person say, Oh, dude, I'm sorry, I really didn't mean it that way. This, you will forget about it, you will embrace the person again. You understand. Depends yeah. on though. If somebody yeah, is yeah. like really, Depends. if it's like, I'm not talking about viciousness. Yeah, 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 I'm not yeah. talking about what I don't take. What I don't take lightly is betrayal. Yeah, so I don't, I don't. I, I don't like betrayal. I, I mean, don't, I, I hate you're that. not talking about betrayal. You know what? You, you know what? Understand? I will say if, if, if you have said it to me uh-huh. and I hear that other people have got like, hear it, then I'm okay with it. Cause you've, you've said it to me. So I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Uh-huh. But if I hear that you're one way to me and then and like then the behind, you behind back. my back, yeah. that's d- like, that that's forever hurts. done. Yeah. yeah, that's forever done. Cause it's like, I can never trust what I'm getting in front of me. And then ever. you got to vet though. I have seen situations where do you have some evil people mm-hmm. out there to destroy relationships. So you got to have that spirit of discernment mm-hmm. that you can tell that this person said this. You yeah. understand? That's another thing that you come to realize in life. You know, you have people's strategies that will literally set up and destroy an important relationship okay, by creating yeah. some fake false narrative and stuff yeah, like that. Narrative. Yeah, narrative. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my God, Russell, this guy that you think is all like that with you, your best friend is and that is what I had them say. And another thing that you had to uh, bear in mind somebody will say something, not meaning it in a bad way. The same thing, if somebody comes to tell you the tone of voice. And yeah, no, context, I know about that. Yeah, I know about that one. The context will look at say, oh I say, God. that's usually when I say, you're throwing, like we say, uh, you're throwing too much sauce on it. Like you're throwing, yeah, I didn't say it like that. Yeah, no, like, no, yeah, 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 Exactly. That's not how but I said exactly. it. Like that's but not what I meant when I said it. Hear. Yeah. The other person didn't know. They hear, they hear, but then they just want to throw some, they're like, oh, Russell said that you really not like this. It's like, yeah, that's not what I said. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. the person will literally say, so can you imagine they say to you, so, that's the way you judge the other person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? So I'm just saying be very cognizant of that because sometimes, you know, by the time what drops here and crosses here and goes here, it gives a different meaning. Yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. It gives a different meaning. So, mm. uh, you know, you got to be careful. Like, you know, uh, you don't know the context. You don't know mm. what the person is. So don't cut off important relationships. You know, usually you have that sixth sense. You're like, hey, is this person capable? You know when people are genuine and when they are fake. Yeah. Because when somebody is trying to be fake around you, it doesn't take long. No, it doesn't. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's so long that you can pretend. Yeah. They, they, you know, some little light will just penetrate through the darkness <laughs> and you'll be like, what? You know, like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But damn, that was, I mean... We could have, there's so much stuff that there's like different avenues we could have dove, dive, uh, dove into. I'm going to probably have you, because now that I think about it, like it would be interesting to get her take on certain different, like, uh, like, I guess like cultural events and like current events. Mm-hmm. Cause like you have like your way of thinking, I have my what? way of thinking that we're different ages I too. Do. So yeah. Yeah. We yeah. can yeah. discuss that all you want. Like yeah. politics, I'm down. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't get a one down. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I want that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What are they talking about? Like, Whenever oh, we have those discussions at dinner and stuff like that, it's like, mom, you can't like, say that. Or like, mom, you can't. You I know, know, right? Yeah. I'd be like, hey, hey, hey. You know. Yeah, please, yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm just getting scared. Yeah, yeah. But no, that, this was an amazing episode. Um, once again, it's, it's always, uh, I said at the beginning, but it's cool to now be able to speak to you as like an adult. I, I guess know, right? it's kind of weird because whenever your parents are around, you never really feel like an adult <laughs> anymore. It almost feels like, uh, you know, it's like my mom and I'm a child again. Yeah. Yeah. But um, like I, you guys get to see kind of like a part or a big part of the reason as to why I am the, uh, the way I am now. Like my mom is uh, I always say like you're the you're the you're kind of like 
the structure of who I am. Like uh, people see me, but what they're really seeing is like what you were able to build uh, for the past, you know, 20 plus years. So a lot of who I am is, is who my mom is. And uh, if you, if you think I'm a, if you think I'm cocky and confident and brash it's because my mom, <laughs> my mom made it, my mom made me that way. Like there isn't, there isn't, there's never been a time in my life where my mom told me I couldn't do something like when it came to, you know, attacking uh, social media and being a powerlifter and just like anything that I wanted. My mom always told me whatever you want to accomplish in life, you could do as long as you work hard. And I've always instilled that watching my mom uh, do the stuff that she's done in her life. Like I, she's been a representation of that, but then also her words have encouraged me and still encourage me to this day. So anytime I go through anything, I, I text my mom, I call my mom. Um, <laughs> she's created a safe space for me to have conversations with her. I think one of the biggest things that stuck, that stuck with me is when I left for college, you said, Hey son, like, you know, I am a, I am one of your guys. So like, if you want to ever come to me and talk to me, I'll never judge you. I'll never turn you away. You're my son. And I always want the best for you. So, um, right. yeah, I'm always appreciative. I just noticed you're wearing a full, uh, Louis Vuitton. I, Get up. You know, no, but <laughs> I, I, I'm not broke today. You know <laughs> what I mean? I'm not trying, you know, like, it's yeah. just my Friday. Just through something that just something yeah just something yeah. comfortable you yeah. know with the full I louis v set so i was, was looking like, i was like louis yeah just little louis something. on just something on I'm okay i see then, yeah 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 just a little break from work i <laughs> had to go put that suit up you know <laughs> <laughs> but also awesome if you guys didn't if you guys didn't know mom you practice uh health care law or is no, it it's a personal injury consumer law i always get that yeah, mixed personal up injury. yeah so if you get hit i mean yeah, she just that's you know right. she just settled uh texas settling settled a cases. huge little putting money in people's pockets yeah I know. so it's if you if you get hit if you slip i know some of y'all be joking about wanting to get hit by a car <laughs> she's the person to hit up so put uh, some money in your pocket yeah right? But thank you so much for coming on to the podcast, Mom. Thank you, yeah. Son. Are you gonna listen to this back or are you gonna Am I are you gonna listen to this episode or no? I'm gonna listen to it. Yeah. I, I, you know, oh I don't know. I, I don't like to listen to my own I don't voice. I hate listening to <laughs> you know that documentary they made, I still have not watched it. Uh, it's beautiful. See, I that's the thing. Other yeah. people will be like, Oh, it's okay, watch it, but it's hard to listen to I can never song. I don't wanna see my like I don't like I just don't it's hard. But you know, you can you imagine? I can't believe it. Can you imagine how good it is? He is on. I, yeah, I don't. I can't even recall my own. This is. I don't want to list. I don't. I don't want to list. I'll just go delete. Do another one. Delete. You yeah. Know? You're like, why? Yeah. Why is my mouth moving like that? Like, yeah. why am I looking like like look why this am way? Why sounding like that? Yeah. Oh, look at how I look. I look so weird. I yeah. Say, Mom, you look okay. No, I don't. Do yeah, I yeah. Delete and start again. No. Yeah. But this is yeah, an amazing podcast. I, I really, good. yeah, I really feel like people are going to listen to this and take like a lot from it. I but so. I mean, as you guys listen, you can tell like this is where <laughs> this is where I get that motivational shit from. Like my mom is like always about it and if i ever need like an extra breath of fresh air or like yeah. uh, something to push me it's my mom who i text so um yeah. yeah once again mom thank you so much for coming on to the podcast thanks yeah. for having me yeah 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 thank yeah. you so much i'm open yeah whatever i can do to do my little contribution <laughs> yeah i'm open yeah awesome thank so you. also if you guys are listening um when this episode drops it'll be my my volume six of damn that was like a horrible promo intro but volume six of my power building program will be up on russellapp.com so if you guys want to get a one-time purchase program hit that up um 25 dollars. so anyways thank you guys for tuning into episode number 30 of the better take podcast i appreciate you guys for tuning in uh catch you guys in the next one peace